final. And that's going to be between the number three seed, Park Cottage Grove. They're going to be the visitors here today, the Wolf Pack of Park Cottage Grove. And they're going to be taking on the Eagle Wildcats, who is the number two seed. Uh, just to remind everybody that as far as uh, playing two games today, Park would have to win the first game to then push us on to a second game. Lovely day here in Burnsville. Uh, I got about 98 degrees, says it feels like 101. There's a little bit of southeast wind, about seven miles an hour, so the 15 to nothing five run game. And then on their, on their route back through the, what you want to call the loser's bracket of the uh, double a limb, uh, on, the, on Friday the 4th, they beat Eastview five to one. Then on Monday, they beat Lakeville North 12 to four. That game was going on at the same time as the Egan and Rosemont game. And then they won yesterday against the number one seed, Rosemont, 9-8. to eight. So that was their path to this championship game. And as you can see, they played uh, two extra games than Egan has up until this point. Uh, for Egan, their path to the championship game was uh, Memorial Day. They beat Burnsville, the number seven seed, 8-1. to one. Then they beat Park, like I mentioned earlier, on Wednesday, 15-0 uh, in a five-inning contest at uh, Egan High School. And then they won on Monday. They beat the number one seed, Rosemont, 9-5. to So that's where both teams are uh, as they kind of came into this game here today, into this championship game. Um, it's going to be hot, but the boys are ready to go on both sides. They can handle it. And then we will be getting into the lineups here shortly. Um, we'll probably do it about the same time uh, as the PA guy is, uh, is announcing up top. Uh, but then that way you can kind of get a glimpse as to who the players are as they're being announced over. Um, for Egan... A couple facts, I guess, and this as well as uh, for Park 2, but, and we'll get into these as the games go on. But for Egan, they do currently have the school record for wins. Uh, currently, they're sitting at 17-6 and six overall with a 12-6 and six conference record. That was tied for second in their conference um, with Farmington as Rosemont was the number one seed in the South Suburban Conference. And then um, I believe Park Cutters Grove was 17-6 and six coming into today's game. Um, I wasn't able to see their conference uh, record as well. Um, but then also just adding in, so we're going to have, uh, it looks like we're going to have three umpires today, so it's a little bit of a change for the championship game. Uh, typically you only have two. And then, uh, like we said, we will uh, get into the starting lineups, and then I have some stats and all the other good stuff. You know what I'm going to do right away, though, is I'm going to read you guys the uh, a statement from the Minnesota State High School League because I feel like it's a good time to get this out there right away while the coaches are talking and going over the ground rules. Uh, the Minnesota State High School League reminds us that the educational value of this event is more important than its outcome. Respect for others, including opponents and officials, is one of those values. Support today's teams with the respect they deserve. And it sounds like we're getting ready here for the PA announcer to uh, announce the lineups. So in doing so, I'll just kind of follow right along with them and uh, give you guys both teams' lineups and the coaching staff as well. I don't believe they're gonna announce the full rosters. I don't think they do the full rosters until teams get to state. Um, but first will be the visiting Wolf Pack from Cottage Park Cottage Grove uh, will be the first ones announced here today. And I'll just jump in right away, actually. Um, so with that being said, and you'll see it here in a second, but the, sh the leadoff hitter is going to be the shortstop, number five, Josh Hatano. Out in left field today will be number 16, Sam Jansky. Playing first base for the Wolf Pack will be number 17, Will Smoot. At third base today will be number 13, Clayton Burling. Out in right field for the Wolf Pack will be number four, Jackson Tessman. Doing the catching today for the Wolf Pack will be number 20, Jackson Widener. DHing today will be number 21, Tucker Novotny. And he'll be DHing for the pitcher, number 18, Connor Mestemacher. Uh, playing second base for the Wolf Pack will be number two, Zach Flatham. And then out in center field for the Wolf Pack will be number 10, Ben Johnson. Uh, the Wolf Pack, their head coach is John McGowan, and he's assisted by Jeff Pelasco, Scott Briggs, and Chris Carlson. Um, as far as for the Egan lineup, and they're the number two seed coming in, haven't had a loss yet. Uh, leading off will be their shortstop, number 16, Liam Martin. Uh, playing second base today will be number five, Mason Amon. Pitching today will be number 10, the senior Lincoln Barry. At first base will be another senior, 21, Charlie Harms. DHing today for the for the Egan Wildcats, number 29, Griffin Fenske, and he'll be designated hitting for the center fielder, number three, George Anderson. Out in left field today will be number eight, Alex Lockenmeyer. Uh, doing the catching today will be number seven, Charlie Steffen. 
Out in right field will be number 27, Sam Shackman. And then at third base will be number 11, Will Hughesman. Um, as far as for Egan, their head coach is Steve Butler, and he's assisted by Tom Booski, Steve Cullors, and Zach Wall. So uh, there's your lineups, and as, as I said, uh, soon the uh, P announcer will be announcing both teams starting lineups, and then we'll get to the national anthem, and then we'll be ready to start playing some ball, and hopefully uh, some wind will come and play as well and cool everybody down a little bit. Um, with that being said, though, like I said, uh, there's a few stats that we'll get into as the game goes on. You know what I'm going to do right away? I'm going to do this throughout today's game, but I want to make sure that we thank Egan TV for providing um, this excellent coverage and volunteering and, and putting out their time and being here in the heat, too. So to let everybody know, we got on the camera today. On the camera crew, we got Greg Borman, and we got Joe Chupik. And then the engineer in the truck will be Dalton Gruber, and the producer will be Josh Sibley. So once again, we uh, I know all of Egan and Eastview uh, and just the local area loves to thank Egan TV for their coverage of all high school events, whether it be concerts, uh, graduations, spring sports, fall sports, winter sports, and so forth. So um, we're looking forward to pro you know potentially providing even some more fall action coming up this fall as well. So we're gonna say, we're gonna say thanks to those guys a couple times because that's always the crew, the thankless job of the crew that are that are working behind the scenes. Um, as we mentioned, uh, now we're getting going through the Wolfpack starting lineup, which I already kind of read to you. And then uh, we'll get to the national anthem here shortly as well. Um, I do have some statistics. The tough part was is that uh, they weren't fully updated. So with that being said, um, uh, you're gonna have to bear with me because what I have is what I have. But, but both coaches were kind enough to give me some tidbits along the way. Uh, so that was very helpful so we can uh, fill that in and uh, we can do a little bit more talking and not too much dead air today because uh, you're going to be hearing me all, all game today. My name is Casey Lux. Um, I, uh, my ties, I guess, to Egan would be is uh, head coach Steve Butler. I played college baseball with him at Concordia St. Paul. Real good, dear friend of mine. And uh, when he took over the starting job in 2018, he asked me to come along and help out with the PA announcing as well as the scoreboard. I do some DJ work for him in between innings. And then uh, I like to uh, get on the microphone here for Egan TV when we got some Egan games or some area games as well. So I will be the one that uh, will be uh, flowing through your air your uh, airways today or your TV screens, however you want to stream it today. Like I said, we're on YouTube. And then uh, we'll give us some announcements later on tonight. If there is a second game, we'll have plenty of announcements for you for that Saints game tonight because that'll be getting moved as well. But. Uh, we're just going to go one game and one pitch at a time. So I think we're getting ready here for the National Anthem, and then we're ready for first pitch. So At this time, I think we're going to take a little pause and listen to our National Anthem, and we'll be back here in about a minute or two. back. Wonderful job in the National Anthem. I couldn't tell if that was live or if that was just a played version, but either way, excellent. And uh, we got a little bit of a breeze. Like I said, it was going to be looking towards about seven miles an hour southeast wind, so we'll see how that comes into play. Uh, probably won't be enough to really be moving balls or making things difficult in the outfield or the infield, but it will be keeping all of us on the cooler side of things. So we're going to start off with a couple tidbits right away. The leadoff hitter, like we said, will be uh, Josh Hatano, the shortstop. Uh, coming into today's game, Atano, uh, where are we at here? He's got 28 RBIs, uh, batting 378, five stolen bases, two home runs. 
uh, for a town of the shortstop. A nifty player. Uh, the one thing I'll mention was, um, you know, Egan was just uh, had the hot bats last Wednesday. They put up 15 hits in four innings and tacked on 15 runs. So it was it was tough to say, uh, you know, if, if you got the the best uh, outcome and the best uh, best game, I guess, from uh, Cottage, Park Cottage Grove. So I know that they're ready to uh, showcase their talent and get get everybody uh, back up to speed here. As like I said, as I mentioned, they've won now. Uh, they've won three in a row, so uh, they're they're uh, definitely feeling some momentum here. But they know they got a tough task ahead of them. But as everybody knows, it's one pitch at a time and one uh, inning at a time. So we'll see, um, you know, what uh, Cottage, Cottage Grove can bring here today. They did face Barry last Wednesday, so they're going to be uh, familiar with him. And actually, Egan faced uh, Metzemacher as well last Wednesday. So familiar with both pitchers. Uh, as we said, it's going to be Barry. So your Duracell battery of the game will be Barry on the mound for the Wild for the Wildcats and then Chuck or Charlie Stefan is your catcher for the Wildcats. Uh, across the diamond you're going to have Will Huseman at third. You're going to have Liam Martin at short. Mason Amon at second. Charlie Harms at first. Across the outfield you're going to have Alex Lockenmeyer out in left. You're going to have George Anderson out in center and then you're going to have Sam Chapman in right field. So that's going to be our, our setup here for today. Didn't get the umpires' names. They might want to re remain anonymous. Um, but I've been impressed with the, uh, with the umpiring and the officiating uh, throughout these playoffs. Uh, Matano will be leading off, and he's going to be followed up by Sam Jansky. And then the number three hitter will be Will Smoot. And then, like I said, we'll have some stats along the way from both teams that we'll try to fill in when, when time is allotted. But beautiful day, great crowd. Everybody's still filtering in. The one thing uh, here at Allen Magnet is it does take a little bit to get in because uh, they're, they're going kind of one car at a time. So I noticed that last game that uh, you got to get here early, which it looks like a lot of people have already done. So ready to go here. And uh, Barry looks like he's got about a pitch or two. And then we're going to have Atano leading us off for the start of the first inning, which we will. So Atano is a junior. As I mentioned, uh, leads team, RBI is 28. Batting a 378 clip. Has some home run potential with two home runs on the season here. Barry works a fastball, curveball with a strong change. A location pitcher keeps it down and uh, establishes those corners early and often. Wind blowing out to left center field. Like I said, about a seven mile an hour clip. And here we're going to have our first pitch here of the day from Barry, which is going to be a ball up. So first pitch is up for a ball to Hatano, the shortstop for the Wolfpack. We'll get you some Barry's stats here in a second. There's a fastball in the outside corner, swung on and missed by Hatano. Count now currently one and one. On the season for Barry, well, like I said, these stats might not be fully up to date, but the ones that I had, nine games pitched, five and oh record. 40 and a third innings pitch. Obviously, there could have been a little bit that could be tacked onto this. A 1.21 ERA. Fall ball to the third base corner, and then a 31 strikeouts to nine walks clip. At least up, that was, uh, looked like that was through 21 game, 23 games. So I think they're missing two games, their last two games. And Barry uh, actually just pitched for the last out against Rosemont for the save on Monday. 1-2 count here to Atano. Fastball's up, misses. Not by much, but misses early. So we'll see if that, that's a pitch that gets called as the game crawls on. But early on, he wants Barry to bring it down just a tad more. Playing Atano pretty much straight up. You'll see Egan at times will do a shift, whether it be for a righty or lefty. There's the fastball in the inside corner for strike three. So Atano goes down looking for the first out of the inning. And that's going to bring up Sam Jansky. Jansky on the season, he's a junior, as, as well as Zatano, 439 average with four stolen bases. First offering curve, that doesn't curve for a ball. You'll notice pitchers always trying to get a little bit of a feel on these hot, sweaty days. There's a curveball in there for a strike. I don't see a rosin bag behind the mound, but big thing is is uh, sweating, and if you can actually get a good grip on the 
good, good, good grip, and mainly on your curveball is, is what is needed. This is a foul ball straight back. So one twos are count here. One down, Alabama Field, section three, four A, so three A A A A championship game between the Eagle Wildcats, number two seed, and the three seed. Park has drove ground ball to Martin. Martin reels it over to Han Harms for the second out of the inning as Jansky flies down the side, down the first baseline. So two down here, now we got Will Smoot stepping in, the first baseman. We're gonna check out the uh, smooth fielding of Liam Martin as he gets Jansky by about two steps there. I just a routine ground ball to short. So Smoot steps in, first pitch, rip down the line and that's gonna go foul. Two hopper to the fence. Smoot does have some pop on the season. Smoot, three home runs. So leads the team in home runs with three. Oh, one pitch. Change up in the outside corner for a ball. So Barry's effectively working the zone. Isn't getting that high strike as of yet, but it's early. Trying to change the sight lines of the hitters here early on. There's a line shot right at Hughesman. So Smoot lines it up, but right at Hughesman for the third out of the inning. So four park here in the bottom or top of the first. No runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We'll be back here in 30 seconds for the bottom of the first inning. Wolfpack went down one, two, three in the top of the first. The energizer battery of today's game for the Wolfpack today will be Connor Mestemacher on the mound, and he'll be throwing to his catcher, Jackson Widener. Leading off here, though, for the Wildcats will be the shortstop, Liam Martin. A couple facts about Liam here before we even get into some stats for himself or even Mestemacher is that. Uh, Liam set the single season strikeout record um, as of uh, Monday. First pitch from Messemacher, fastball in the inside corner for a strike. Also, Liam is uh, set, is a early uh, commit to Cal California Santa Barbara. So second pitch, says that first fastball was inside for a strike, second pitch, fastball in the outside corner for a strike. So Messemacher working both sides of the plate here early for the Wolfpack. Defend mode now is Martin. Right on the knees, just missed it. Nice pitch. Mestemacher trying to set the zone here early and often, which you love to see from your pitcher right away here in the bottom of the first. No score here in the bottom of the first inning. One twos are count to Martin. Mestemacher's pitch, fastball up and out. Mestemacher on the year, at least up to these stats that I have, a 3.86 ERA. Four and three on the season, 29 innings pitch and a 21 to 11 strikeout to walk ratio. Curveball on the outside misses. So 3-2 now is the count. 
as Messemacher did have Martin 0-2 early. Liam Martin on the season batting 311. Fouled off to the right side. As I mentioned, these stats are about through 21 games for the Wildcats, so a couple games are missing, but still gives you some perspective. 13 walks, uh, 12 RBIs at least through 21 games. Nine stolen bases as well. And he takes a walk, so adds to that total. We'll see if he is in motion here early on for the Wildcats, which Coach Butler likes to do. Second baseman is Mason Amon. Follows the path of Amon's to play at Egan. His older brother Jackson is also a second baseman. Currently plays for the St. John's Johnnies. Amon always a threat to bunt, drag bunt, even a flash of a fake bunt to get in motion. There's the bunt sign. Misses in the outside corner. Messemacher not missing by much. Right where you want to be. In and out. Not throwing it down to the heart of the plate early. One knows our count here. Bottom of the first. Section 3, 4A championship game. The number two seed, Egan Wildcats. There goes Martin. Ahmed gets into one, hits one to center. But Johnson's got a beat on it as he comes in and makes the catch. So dropped the barrel a little bit to Ahmed and got underneath it. And Johnson was able to take about five steps back and make, make an easy routine catch. So Messamacher gets his first out of the inning as Martin was in motion. Now let's bring up the senior, Lincoln Berry. Lincoln himself is set to uh, play next year at, the, at Nyack, which is the uh, Northern Iowa Area Community College. Having a heck of a senior year. One down here in the bottom of the first. Ball's hit to Hatano. Hatano flips over to Flatham. Flatham relays it to Smoot in time. The old 6-4-3 double play to get Wolfpack out of the inning as Messemacher keeps the pitching count low and finds his way through the inning smoothly. We're gonna take a quick look at this play here by Hatano with the soft hands. Two hopper flips it over to Flatham. Flatham with a quick release over to Smoot. And there it is, a double play. So, in the top, or the bottom of the first, excuse me, for Egan, no runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We got a couple announcements here set up for you. ETV, make sure to follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and subscribe on YouTube. Visit egan-tv.com. And like I said, one more time, you can follow them on Twitter, Facebook, and you can also subscribe on YouTube, which is what's bringing you the action here today. So Messemacher is able to get his favorite pitch there, the old double play ball, as he was able to uh, have that run over to Atano, and Atano with a smooth delivery to Flatham, and Flatham relayed it over to Smoot. So, we're gonna be getting set up here. The uh, Wolfpack will be sending up Clayton Berlin, the third baseman. So they're gonna be sending up their four, five, six hitters here in the top of the second. All righty, Barry got through that first inning pretty smoothly. Only, I think, one three ball count. There's a curveball in the outside corner for a strike. Berlin, the third baseman. Trying to see what stats we got on Berlin here as we see the offering. There's a fly ball straight up. And Barry kind of loses it in the sky, which is going to bring in Martin to make the catch. So Berlin retired after only two pitches, and that's going to bring up the right fielder, Jackson Tessman. We already went through some of Barry's stats. I'm gonna see if I got some stuff lined up for Tessman as well. First pitch though, curveball that hangs for a ball. 
Let's see what we got here for at least four games worth of for Tessman. There's a rip into the gap for a base hit. That's going to get past Lockenmeyer and it's going to put Tessman on second. So just before I can even look up stats for Tessman, he laces one the first hit of the day for the Wolfpack into left center field. After at least the four games that I had, Tessman was batting 308 early on in the season. So Tessman now at second here with one down, and that's going to bring up Jack, the catcher, Jacks, Jackson Widener. First pitch to Widener is a curveball in the outside corner. The one thing uh, that the Wolfpack had going against Barry last Wednesday was is they put a hit up every inning. A lot of times it was the leadoff hit. They just weren't able to uh, manufacture any of those runs as the game went on. I think Barry had about five, five hits through five innings, so about a hit an inning uh, before he was pulled uh, for relief. That was a fall ball down the third baseline. 1-1 one, one is our count here. One down, top of the second. Number three, Park Cottage Grove Wolfpack taking on the number two seed, Egan Wildcats. Widener set to play at Northern State. He takes that fastball low and out for a ball. Two ones are count. So Widener set to play at Northern State. Uh, we're gonna kind of fill you in on, on where some of these seniors are heading off to in uh, after the summer, as they, some of them are pursuing baseball in the collegiate level. Two one pitch, fouled off on the right side. So now it's two two is our count. Tessman on second with that first hit of the game that doubled the left center field. It got between Anderson and, and Lockenmeyer. One down. There's a curveball. Slow roller to Martin. He's got to charge it. Martin charges it, gets it over to Harms in time for the second out of the inning. So nice job by Liam. That ball was just kind of rolling across on the grass, soft and slowly. Smart move to come up and charge it to get the speedy Widener down the first baseline. We're going to take a look at it. Widener just got a little bit out in front of it. That's why it was kind of a slow roller. And the throw still got him by about a foot, about a step and a half. Two down here. Fastball's low. With that ground ball, though, Tessman does scoot over to third. And that's going to bring up the DH, Tucker Novotny. Uh, Novotny, the ace of the Wolfpack squad, but also one of their better hitters as well. He's going to be going to the U of M. He's going to be a Golden Gopher as a pitcher. As the hot shot hit to Hughesman at third, Hughesman gathers himself, throws, and throws it away. So Hughesman with a little extra pad in the glove gave Novotny more time down the line, and then it also pulled Harms off the bag. So Tessman comes in to score. As there was an E5 on the throw from Hughesman. Second baseman now is up, number two, Zach Flatham. Let's go, Bull. Flatham with the quick, quick, relief, quick delivery and relay on that last inning, the inning ending 6 4 3 double play. Here's Barry's pitch. Fouled straight back for strike one. So Wolfpack strike first with a run here. And that was manufactured by the double by Tessman. Got over to third on the slow, slow grounder to short by Widener. And then the errant throw by Hughesman brought him in to score. Ball in the dirt, it's gonna get past Stefan. And that's gonna move Novotny over to second base. So the force is taken away, play's gonna be at one. As Flatham steps in. Uh, Flatham set to play next year at St. John's as well. So both teams are about sending uh, four to five guys onto the collegiate level. Curve on the outside corner for a strike, making it one, two. Two down here in the top of the second. One nothing is our score. The number three seed, Wolfpack, Parker Cottage Grove leading one nothing. 
see if Barry goes to a change up here. And he does, followed away by Flatham. One, two's the count, two down. Top of the second, we're at Allen Magnet Park here in Burnsville. They were the host as of uh, starting Monday, well actually maybe last week. And there's strike three in the outside corner. So Barry gets Flatham looking in the outside corner, but the Wolfpack did strike first. So the Wolfpack in the top of the second, one run on one hit, one air, and one left on. So after one and a half complete, it is the Wolfpack one, the Wildcats zero. We'll be back in 30 seconds for the bottom of the second inning. So bottom of the second inning, Egan trailing one nothing after that double by Tessman. Moved over to third on the ground ball to short by Widener, and then came in to score on the errant throw by Hughesman at third with two outs. That's gonna bring up Charlie Harms, the senior first baseman. Charlie uh, was having a heck of a season. I mean, has had a heck of a season. But was having a heck of a season. And then in their non-conference game against uh, Grand Rapids, as we see the first pitch by Mestamacher. Fastball in the outside corner. I believe at one point he was like 11 for 11 and uh, was just tattooing the ball over the field. And the poor kid, last inning, last inning of the game against Park at Grand Rapids. As you see the second delivery. Fastball outside, so two O's account. Uh, he was just doing his normal, you know, in, in between inning grounders to the infield and he uh, reached back to put his foot on the base and, and turned his ankle. And, and what they thought was going to be maybe about a one week injury for, for Charlie. End up being about a two weeks to almost three weeks, but obviously they're happy to get his bat back in the lineup as he takes that fastball in the outside corner for a strike. So Messamacher doing a nice job of uh, working the corners and, and doing his best to keep it low here early on in this game. He knows where he can get in trouble against Egan. Uh, he's faced him before and wants to keep it down. There's another outside corner fastball in there for another strike to harm. So two twos are count. Try to give you some stats on Charlie here in a second if we have time. Two twos are, is our pitch here. Fastball blows it past Harms on the high cheese. So Harms goes down swinging. That's gonna bring up the DH, Griffin Fenske, the designated hitter. He's, he's hitting today for the center fielder, George Anderson. Fenske has, has been a great surprise to the Wildcats. Through those uh, 20, first 21 games and the stats that I have, was hitting 394. First pitch from Estemacher, fastball in there for a strike. Uh, and, that, and that average is only going up because uh, against Rosemont on Monday, he went uh, big fly, Captain Insane Obam, to left field for a three-run homer, and then he also had a triple later on in that game. There's a curveball that stayed up high. Uh, through those 21 games, though, he was 13 for 33 with 10 RBIs on the season. And as I mentioned, he's only added to that total as of recently. As he pops one up, that's coming right back to the stands. Who's got the hands? Everybody looks to be safe, so we're happy with that. Nobody brought their glove today, apparently. All right, one, two is our count. Messemacher's pitching a nice game here early on. The designated hitter, Griffin Fenske, is up at the plate. And like as I mentioned, he's hoping to keep the hot streak rolling. As you see him choke up here a little bit on this one, two delivery. Curveball low, two, two is the count. I always like it when those, the little league rules and the little league uh, coaching tips have 
choking up with two strikes. You still see it in high school. Fastball fouled straight back. Two twos to count. Mestermacher is in a nice groove here early on. I like his pace, I like his demeanor. Just getting the ball and throwing. Him and Widener calling a good game here early on. There's the fastball on the outside corner looking. Messemacher gets his second strikeout of the inning. Messemacher is trying to get himself a lawnmower here in the second inning. Trying to get a little snapper three strikeouts, but we'll see what the left fielder, Alex Lockemeyer, has to say about that. lockmeyer has been batting kind of all around the lineup. Early on in the season, he was the leadoff. Now he's going to move down to about the sixth, seventh spot. Fastball on the outside corner for a ball. Lockemeyer, like I said, through 21 games, was batting 258. Um, four stolen bases, four RBIs. But like I said, most of the season, he was their leadoff. So not a lot of RBI opportunities for Alex. Uh, but now he's uh, moved down the lineup a little bit. As you see, fastball in there for a strike. And he's, he's gained some more RBI chances and opportunities as the season has come on. One one's the count, two down here. Wolfpack leading one to nothing here in the bottom of the second. Messmacher has retired the first two on his own with strikeouts. As that fastball is low in the dirt for ball two. Lockmeyer got quick wrist, likes to pull the ball. Swings at the outside fastball. 2-2 two, two now is the count. Egan still looking for the first hit. The one hit by the Wolfpack was Tessman's double to left center. There's a hot shot, a high bounce up the middle. That's going to get through for a single for Lockemeyer. So Lockemeyer battles the count to 2-2. Two, two. And then bounces one pretty much right in front of the mound for a base hit, the first hit of the day by the Wildcats. As we mentioned, there's that hot shot that just got up and over the mound and then did, you know, had enough speed and enough height to get past Fladham. Fladham probably needed about maybe two more steps or he just needed that ball to slow down a little bit. Even if he makes that play, he's gonna need a rocket of an arm to, to turn around and get Lockmeyer, who does run fast. So it'll be a tough play regardless. So first hit by Egan, that brings up Charlie Steffen. Fake bunt with the throw down to second by Widener, not in time. So some people might have been confused thinking, what is the catcher doing bunting with two outs? But it was just a fake bunt to get Lockmeyer moving and to be a little bit of a distraction to the catcher Widener. Lockmeyer just gets his left hand in as that throw is a little high. Otherwise, it looked like it would have been on time if that throw would have been maybe chest level to get Lockmeyer. Lockmeyer now at second with a 1-0 count. Swing and a miss by Charlie Steffen, the catcher. 1-1's our count. Lockmeyer is now sitting on second base after a stolen base. Steffen on the season, what we had here. Through 21 games, is hitting about 220 with nine RBIs. Fastball on the outside corner. Has a good eye at the plate. Had about uh, eight walks on the season. And he had the ever important solo home run at Shakopee. That was uh, the game winning hit, which was a one nothing win over Shakopee. Lockemeyer on second. The pitch to Stefan is low. So 3-1 is our count. Messemacher was cruising as he struck out the first two Egan Wildcat batters. And then the bouncer up the middle by Lockemeyer for a single with two strikes. 3-1's the count. Probably gonna be seeing a fastball here. And he does, and it's inside. Maybe we were a little ahead of ourselves here on the, on the old uh, scoreboard. Now we got 3-2, there we go, okay, okay. So there was a strike in there that somebody called up top, called it a ball. All right, three twos, count, two outs. Bottom of the second, Lockemeyer at second. Another bouncer to second base to Flatham. Flatham, nice, easy relay to Smoot to retire the catcher, Stefan. So for Egan in the bottom of the second, they get no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left down. We'll be back again in 30 seconds for the top of the third inning. We'll pack up one to nothing.
Alrighty, we're back here at Alamagna Park, Section 3, 4A. So it's a mouthful. Championship game, and as we uh, once again want to remind everyone, Egan came in with no losses, so in order for the Wolfpack to uh, move on, they're going to have to beat Egan here twice. So each pitch, every inning is going to be vital for both teams. Barry gave up the double, the one-out double to Tessman in the top of the second. Quick recap. Moved, uh, Tessman moved over to third on a slow gro slow roller to short by Widener and scored on an errant throw from third baseman Huseman. The number nine hitter now is gonna be leading off here in the top of the third and that's gonna be the center fielder Ben Jan Johnson. Uh, ben Johnson, like I said, we only have about four game of stats or so, but I can just give you a taste of what he did through those four. There's a hot shot to Huseman. Huseman with the quick glove, the relay over to Harms in time. So Huseman gets moving quickly to his left, smoothly fields it, and then the quick release over to Harms. Didn't pack his glove this time to retire Johnson on one pitch. Pitching coach's favorite play and best friend as we see the replay. Nice swing and a good cut by Johnson. Gets on the line quick, but the ball was just hit so hard to Huseman that he had time to uh, relay it over to Harms. To bring back the uh, leadoff hitter, the shortstop, Josh Hatano. First pitch for Barry. Curveball in there for a strike. Like I said, Hatano through those four games of stats that I have. I mean, it's a full stat sheet. 636 batting average, 12 RBIs. And on the season, he's got 28 on the season for Hatano. 28 RBIs, five. Stolen bases, two homers, and a 378 average on the season. 0-1 is our count. Tano wants to get some practice swings in here. Maybe just slow down Barry. The old cat and mouse game between batter and pitcher. There's a change up high for a ball. 1-1 is our count. One down. As Johnson, the number nine hitter, the center fielder, was retired on a one pitch. Hot shot to Huseman. Fastball fouled back. 1-2 is a count to Hitano. Hitano struck out in his first at bat, looking at an outside fastball by Barry. Barry, first time through the lineup with two strikeouts with that one earned run. Another foul off, fall back by Hitano. Tano a junior for the Wolf Pack. In the box, throw it. <laughs> one two's our count. One nothing is our score with the Wolf Pack of Park Cottage Grove leading. Fastball up for a ball. Two two's the count. Waste pitch by Barry to see if he can get a Tano to chase. Fans get a little restless over here. There's a curveball for strike three. Tano goes down for the second time looking. So that'll bring up the left fielder, number 16, Sam Jansky. Jansky grounded out to Martin in the first. And as we mentioned, Jansky also a junior, hitting 439 with four stolen bases as well. Curve on the outside corner for a ball. <laughs> See what we have for some of Jansky's stats here through those four games. He was hitting 667, so these four games, their hitters were rocket shots. There's a strike on the inside corner. Jansky, actually it was just one game, take that back. But yes, on the season he is hitting 439. One, two's the count, two down. Barry retired Johnson on one pitch on a ground ball to Huseman. Struck out Atano on a six pitch at bat. There's a hot shot to right field. He's gonna get past Chapman. We're gonna see if we got double or triple in sights for Jansky as he holds up at second. So, for the Wolfpack, they've picked both. They've gone shopping at both gaps here today. First one was Tessman to left center and now Jansky to right center. And that one just got past the uh, reach of Chapman. Looked like he had a little bit of a beat on it, but it just 
pulled away. It didn't actually get much roll. I thought it was going to get all the way to the fence. I thought we'd have a chance maybe to see Jansky cruise into third. Now we got the number three hitter, Will Smoot, the first baseman, is batting. Smoot, his first time up, lined a hot shot to Huseman at third. Fastball in. So they've gotten to Barry twice with two hits, both of them being doubles. 1 0 the count, two down here. Wolfpack leading 1 0 here in the top of the third. There's a fastball in there for a strike. 1 1 our count. Coach McGowan giving some signals over to Smoot, but you're going to have your three hitter swing away, so just tell him where he wants it. 1 1's the count, two down. Senior Lincoln Barry throwing to another senior, Charlie Stephan, his catcher. Fastball outside corner misses. So two ones are count here in the top of the third. It's cooled down a little bit at, at uh, first pitch time. We were sitting at about 97 degrees. Now we feel like we're a little bit more around the 88, 90. A little bit of a breeze. Two ones count. Curveball in there for a strike. Umpire got a little excited. A little premature celebration. Pulling the string on two strikes. So two twos to count with two down. First baseman, Will Smoot at the plate. Like I said, hit a hot shot to Hughesman his first time up. Sam Jansky, the left fielder, sitting on second after he hit that double to right center field. A two out double by Jansky. Fastball misses on the outside corner. So now we got three two, full count. Barry's done a nice job of staying away from the high pitch counts. I think, I believe this is only his second or third batter of three balls. So here's the three, two, the payoff pitch here with two down. And he hits Smoot on the shoulder. So Smoot reaches and hit by pitch. That's gonna bring up the third baseman, Clayton Berlin. Berlin popped up to the shortstop, Martin. So two down here in the top of the third, you have Jansky on second after his two out double and Smoot on first after the hit by pitch. Fastball's up for a ball. Berlin is gonna be playing next year at Hamlin. And he'll end up being potential teammates with the Egan White right fielder, Sam Chapman. He's also going to Hamlin. Jansky on second. There's a base hit up the middle. Heck of a play by Martin and a big dig by Wow. I thought for a split second Martin was going to catch it. And the soft mitts of Martin scoops it up. The twirl throw to first. Harms luckily got back to the base in time with a quick scoop that robs Berlin of a base hit and an RBI up the middle. As we see this, a one hopper with the soft mitts, a big twist and turn, strong throw, nice short hop dig, and Harms just dug it in time to turn around and find first base for that third out. So for the Wolfpack in the top of the third, no runs on one hit, no errors, and two left on. I'm gonna read another announcement here. Read the uh, Minnesota State High School League announcement one more time just to remind everyone. Minnesota State High School League reminds us that the educational value of this event is more important than its outcome. Respect for others, including opponents and officials, is one of those values. Support today's teams with the respect that they deserve. And we'll just keep it here in between innings. We'll talk our way through it. As I mentioned earlier, Wolfpack have two hits off of Barry, both of them being on the doubles nature. And Egan got their first hit last inning on the bouncer up the middle by Lockenmeyer. And, and we watched, we just watched Berlin get robbed of a base hit as well as a potential RBI. On the nifty Fred Astaire-like footwear by Liam Martin. So that's gonna bring up the right fielder. It's gonna be Sam Shatman. And Sam is heading off to Hamlin 
next year as well, where he'll be teammates with Berlin. He's coming near me. People gotta be on their toes today. People gotta be on their toes today. So Chapman's first at bat of the day as he fouls that first pitch off. Strike in the favor of Mestemacher. Mestemacher throwing a nice game. Keeping the ball down and working the corners early and often in the count. 0-1, and there's a strike in the outside corner. So just as we say, he hits that outside corner. O2 pitch here to Chapman. Fouled back. Another fastball, they missed the mocker. And Messemacher also going to be at Hamlin. So we got uh, Messemacher and Berlin for the Wolfpack at Hamlin and Chapman at Hamlin. So these guys are going to be teammates soon as he strikes out Chapman on that fastball for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up the third baseman, number 11. Will Huseman. Wildcats send up three lefties in their lineup. Typical starting lineup. Amin, the number two hitter. Harms, the number four hitter. And then Huseman, their third baseman. Typically down in the uh, nine hole. One out here in the bottom of the third. Wolfpack leading one nothing. Messmacher's fastball outside for a ball. Get you some Huseman stats here in a second. And a fastball low and outside. So a reminder about Messemacher, uh, 3.86 ERA. 29 innings pitch, four and three on the season. 21 strikeouts to 11 walks. 2-0, pitch to Huseman. Fastball inside for a strike. Huseman, through 21 games, has hit about 210, four RBIs, three walks, double, five runs. 2 1 pitch. Hit to the third baseman to Berlin. Berlin's relay over to Smoot in time for the out. So, two hopper to Berlin, fields it cleanly, and shuffles it over to Smoot for the second out of the inning. That'll bring up the leadoff, Liam Martin. So one time through the lineup for Mestemacher. He's given up that one hit to Lockemeyer with three strikeouts. And he did walk Martin to start the lead off the game. And he was saved by that big 6-4-3 double play. And Lincoln Berry's uh, grounder to short to get out of that first inning. Fastball in there for a strike. O ones are count, two down. We're at Allen Magnet Field, section 3-4-A. There's a ground ball hit to Atano. Atano can't get the glove on it. And that's gonna allow Martin to reach first. So Messemacher will have to work a little bit more here. As you watch this replay. Looks like that second hop just jumped up on Atano at the last second. Did a nice job of charging it. It didn't look like it hit the lip. It looked like it hit before the lip. Maybe a little bit of that top spin. It looked like where his glove was, it just it rose on him about by another extra foot or so. So Martin always a threat to steal at first. Messemacher keeping him eye, keeping an eye on him. There's the ball in the dirt. Great block by Widener. Catcher working hard for Messemacher here early on. 1 0's the count to Mason Amon. Mason Amon got underneath one as he hit a fly ball, pretty much a routine fly ball to Johnson in center field in the first inning. As we said, Martin always a threat to steal, at least through those 21 games, he had nine stolen bases. And now he just gets picked off at first. I was just gonna mention that he got caught stealing twice, and he gets picked off at first. So Amon now will have to be leading off the next inning. So for Egan in the bottom of the third, no runs. On no hits, there was that one error by Tano and nobody left on. So after three complete, we got Wolfpack one and the Wildcats zero. We'll be back in 30 seconds.
Need a fun summer job? Egan's Cascade Bay is hiring. Serve your community, make friends, earn some money, and help create summer fun for everyone. Lifeguards, pool attendants, guest attendants, grounds attendants are some of the positions that are open. For more info on how to apply, dive into the website at CascadeBay.com. And I will mention this. I kept talking about how I thought it'd be a fun job to be that mascot. And now that we've had these string of 90 degrees, I say whoever's the mascot should be getting double pay because I would not want to be sweating through that outfit in the summertime. So hats off to whoever is the Cascade Bay current mascot. All righty, we're going to jump right back in here, top of the fourth. Wolfpack leading 1-0 over the Wildcats. Wolfpack is the number three seed. The Wildcats the number two seed. Lincolnberry the senior on the mound. First pitch fall back by Jackson Tessman, the right fielder. Tessman had that hot shot to left center that got past Lockenmeyer for that double. And then he came around and scored on the errant throw by Huseman. And that's our only run of the game. There's another rip to right field. We'll see if Chapman's got enough room, which he does. There's plenty of, plenty of foul ground over there. and actually might even stay within fair territory. So he gets the fly out to right. Shackman covers some ground over there to retire. Tessman. Catcher, Jackson Widener. Catcher now is going to be Jackson Widener. As I mentioned, he is a Northern State commit as a catcher. Uh, he had a slow roller to the shortstop, Liam Martin in the second inning for his first at bat. Barry's curveball's in there for a strike. Barry mixing up his pitch as well, not starting everybody off with fastballs. That time he starts Widener off with that curveball. Through those four games, like I said, they got the small stat line. As Widener blasts one out to left, and that's carrying, and it is gone! So Widener looks at a curveball, and then blast the fastball for a solo shot out to left center field as Lockemeyer could only look up for it. So Widener doubles the lead to two nothing here for the Wildcats. So we're gonna take a look at the blast by Widener. And that thing got out in a hurry. Lockemeyer was just looking up, hoping that it might maybe hit the fence and come down. And that thing was climbing up on that tree line as Widener crushes the home run to give the Wolfpack a 2-0 lead here in the fourth inning. There's a fastball to Tucker Novotny for a strike. Oh one one down. Barry to Tucker Novotny as he pops one up. High in the sky to the center fielder, George Anderson, who's under it, makes the catch. As I mentioned, Tucker Novotny, the ace of the Wolfpack pitching staff, going to the University of Minnesota to be a Golden Gopher. He also has plenty of pop in his bat as well. As we mentioned, uh, Novotny with 31 RBIs and two home runs on the season. So that'll bring up the second baseman, Zach Flatham, St. John's Johnny commit. Fastball in there for a strike. Flatham struck out his uh, first time up. Barry's pitch fouled back. So quickly 0-2 to Flatham. Barry's still working strong. But he's given up uh, three extra base hits, two doubles to the gaps and the home run. And there's strike three to Flatham as he offers. So for Egan, or excuse me, for Wolfpack, they get one run on that one big, big hit by Widener. And then uh, no errors, nobody left on. So our score after three and a half complete is two for the Wolfpack and zero for the Wildcats. We'll be back in 30 seconds for the bottom of the fourth inning.
righty, for the Wildcats here in the bottom of the fourth, it'll bring up the second baseman, Mason Amon. Uh, Amon, like I said, flew out to center. He got underneath, a little, dropped the barrel a little bit uh, in the first inning, and then was batting when Liam Martin was picked off at first base to end the bottom of the third. So first pitch for Mestamacher. Fastball in the outside corner for a strike. Amon on the season, at least through, like I said, the 21 games. 317 average. He's going to await the second pitch from Mestamacher. There's a nice changeup on the outside corner with a swing and a miss. For Amon, eight runs, two doubles, a triple, seven walks, six RBIs, and he bats in that second spot all season with eight stolen bases, so always a threat to steal if he can get on. Fouls went off on the left side. So one thing that the Wildcats would like to get going is they need to get runners on early and often. Coach Butler likes to uh, put his runners in motion, whether that be fake bunts and stealing, double steals. As we see a rip by Amon to straightaway center, it's gonna hang up and not enough as Johnson's able to make the catch about a three feet in front of the fence. So it got the Egan fans up out of their seats, but Johnson coolly and calmly finds the fence and gets that out. So Mestamacher using all the field here to keep the ball in play as we watch the pitcher, the senior, Lincoln Berry, step to the plate. Barry, a commit to the Nyack, which is the Northern Iowa Area Community College. First pitch for Mestamacher. There's a rip to left field for a base hit by Barry as he doesn't waste any time. Takes that first pitch offering, and that's the second hit of the game for Egan. I bring up Charlie Harms, who struck out his first time up. First baseman, Charlie Harms. Charlie Harms, as I mentioned, uh, was hitting through 21 games, was hitting 415, 13 runs, 16 walks. As you see that off speed in there for a strike. 15 RBIs with that four, 415 average for Harms. As I mentioned, prior to his injury, I think he was hitting around 650, something ungodly. Messamacher has Harms 0-1 as he takes a look at Barry, as Harms calls time. Barry, as far as a threat to steal through 21 games, has five stolen bases with not being caught stealing once. Leader on the team is Martin. Harms rips one, but it's gonna be right at Tessman as he makes the catch. Only has to take two steps in. Didn't get all of it, he heard it from the barrel, didn't barrel it up as he hits that fly ball out to Tessman for the second out of the inning. So that'll bring up Fenske, the designated hitter. Fenske struck out his first time up. Lincoln Barry sitting on first base with that one out single out to left. Two down here. Wolfpack leading two to nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. That's Mocker keep an eye. There goes Barry. Fenske takes a strike to throw down by Widener. Not in time. Nice throw by Widener. Barry got an excellent jump though, had uh, Mestamacher timed out there at first. So, so Barry gets a stolen base. And now Fenske's sitting at an 0-1 as he took that pitch. So the Wildcats are two for two on stolen bases, but they also were picked off at first last inning to end the inning. And a nice move by Mestamacher over to Smoot. 0-1 is our count. Ball in the dirt, great block by Widener again. It's a call for cleaning up the plate time. One ones are count, two down here in the bottom of the fourth. Number three, Wolfpack of Park Cottage Grove against number two, Egan Wildcats. Fastball in there for a strike on the knees. One, two is the count, two down. As you mentioned, both these teams are familiar with both pitchers, starting pitchers today as uh, both pitched last week on Wednesday. Barry getting the win and Mestamacher getting the loss. There's a slow roller to second. Flatham fields it cleanly and his throw over to Smoot is in time. So it looked like he had a little bit of a shift up the middle, but Flatham does a nice job of getting over to his left, shuffling and then making the play. So for the Egan Wildcats in the bottom of the fourth, no runs on one hit, no errors and nobody left on. After four complete 
It is the Wolfpack 2 and the Wildcats 0. We're going to fill you in some more with some more updates and announcements here in a second. All righty, you can follow Egan TV on Twitter, which is at Egan TV. That's going to be your source to all the updates of what's going to be coming up for the weeks ahead, as well as uh, area updates of scores, and then just the uh, local broadcasting on the daily broadcasting as well. So Egan TV on Twitter, which is at Egan TV. And like I said before, again, if you're enjoying ETV, make sure to follow them, like you just said, on Twitter. But then there's also Facebook, and you can subscribe on YouTube. You can visit egan-tv.com. We're going to keep it right here as we roll into the top of the fifth. Barry still going strong. Like I said, he's only given up three hits, but they were three extra base hits. A double by Tessman, a double by Jansky, and then the big solo shot by the catcher, Jackson Widener. And we're going to have, looks like, Ben Johnson, the center fielder, will be leading off here in the fifth. He had a ground ball, a hot shot, actually, over to third baseman, Huseman. And that looked like that would have been in the top of the third inning. So we'll see if Johnson jumps on an early offering like he did his first time facing Barry. Barry Sr. Throwing to another senior behind the plate, which is Charlie Steffen. And Ben Johnson, the center fielder here, leading off in the fifth. Fastball in there for a strike on the inside. Curveball, bouncer to the hole to Martin. He's got to get rid of it, and he does with a strong arm in time to harm. So Martin takes about two steps to his right, backhands it, and then the strong and quick release to get the speedy center fielder, Johnson, down the line. We're gonna take a quick look at it here. A nice cut, it was actually a high strike. Johnson moving down the line, but the strong throw gets him by about a half a step. All righty, so we got the leadoff hitters back up. Ball is up. The shortstop, number five, Josh Hatano. Hatano has two strikeouts, both looking. One in the first inning, one also in the third inning. One O's are count, one down here in the top of the fifth. Wolfpack leading 2 nothing as that curveball misses outside, two O's a count. Section three, 4A, so three, A, 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 A. <laughs> Championship game and uh, Egan needs one win to advance, whereas the Wolfpack will need to win two times. And there, Tano hits one, flips one out to left field to Lockemeyer for his first hit of the day. And that's the first single of the day by the Wolfpack. So now we'll see if they get Tano in motion as he has four stolen bases on the season. Sam Jansky will step in the left fielder. He had a double, was stranded, but he did have a double in the fourth inning, I, no, excuse me, in the third inning he had a double, two out double. Throw over, ooh, high. Harms makes the play. As I mentioned, Hatano's got four stolen bases on the season. Jansky hitting 439, also with four stolen bases, so their speed is up on top. Haven't seen the Wolfpack send too many in motion, whether it was last Wednesday or today yet, but as we said, Two of their three previous hits were doubles, so they weren't going to be stealing third, and the other was the big homer by Widener. The Gonzo, about three, about three quarters up on the tree line out left center. Another throw over by Barry as Atano gets back in time. 1-0s are count here, one down, top of the fifth. Alamagna Park. Wolfpack versus the Wildcats. The fall ball is going to be out of play in right field. Make it a 1-1 count to Jansky. Keep an eye on Coach McGowan to see if he potentially is going to be putting Catano in motion. You watch him go through the signs. 
for the most part, Egan's been playing the Wolfpack straight up today. As I mentioned, against Rosemont, you notice a few different times with some shifts towards lefties or shifts towards righties. That did seem to work in Egan's favor in that Rosemount game. But for the most part today, they're playing the Wolfpack straight up throughout the game. That's uh, Barry's third time over to first, so he's definitely keeping an eye on the Tano. Knows that typically the leadoff, he's got some speed, got some wheels. We'll see if they get those in motion. There's a hot shot to third. Gets past Huseman. Second hit of the inning as Jansky now has a single as well as that double. And that'll bring up the first baseman, Will Smoot, who uh, lined out a hot shot to Huseman in the first to end the inning and then was hit by pitch on a 3-2 count in his second at bat. So, Atano at second. Jansky at first, back-to-back -back singles, one down. Barry looking for a double player, an easy infield pop-up as he gets a curve on the outside corner for a strike. Outfield playing Smoot pretty much straight up as well, not too much shift left or right. Anderson playing a little deeper than uh, Lockmeyer in left and Chapman in right. Infield playing smooth straight up as well. Another curveball in there for a strike. 0-2's the count. So he's shown up two curves. We'll see if he goes either fastball high or maybe even a curveball low in the dirt. He's got to trust Stefan to keep that in front of him to keep Atano at second base. 0-2's the count, one down here in the top of the fifth. Wolfpack leading 2-0 over Egan. There's that check swing. And they check it, and it is strike three. So he did go fastball up. Retires Smoot for the second out of the inning. And that'll bring up the third baseman, Clayton Berlin. Berlin popped up to short in the second and then hit a uh, grounder to Liam Martin at short in the fourth. Excuse me, the third. Curb on the dirt for a ball, one is our count. As we mentioned, Berlin also, it's kind of Hamlin day at the park. Berlin and Mestemacher going to Hamlin, and then uh, the right fielder for the Wildcats, Chapman, going to Hamlin as well. One O's are count, two down. Top of the fifth, Hatano on second. Change up in the outside corner for a strike, one ones are count. Hatano on second with a one out single. And that was followed up by a Another one-out single by Jansky, both out to left field. As Barry wants to uh, negotiate this next pitch a little bit here with Stefan. Or at least, if anything, kind of figure out maybe what spot of the zone he wants to attack. But I've noticed at least this year, uh, doing the PA work for all the home games for Egan, uh, most of the teams have their pitching coach call the game from the dugout. So it's it's... I wouldn't say rare, but you're just not seeing as many catchers in high school uh, given the, the trust to call their game from start to finish. One ones are count. There's a curveball. Inside corner for a strike. So one, two nows are count, two down. Hatano on second after that one out single. Jansky on first after that one out single. And Barry was able to retire the number three hitter Smoot on that check swing 0-2 fastball. Big payoff pitch here for Barry, trying to get some momentum for the Wildcats going into the bottom of the fifth. A nice block by Stefan. And a smart, smooth operator in Berlin as he laid off that ball in the dirt. So 2-2 two -two with two outs here is the count. Top of the fifth, Casey Lux here on Egan TV. Happy that you could join us from all across. Hoping that uh, some of the relatives that aren't in the area are able to watch grandkids and cousins and nieces or nieces nephews and we're so happy that Egan TV is able to provide the feed there's a nice pitch in the outside corner must have just missed a little bit outside it looked like it was on the knees but it might have missed just a tad outside 3-2 now everybody will be in in motion play will be at one for the Wildcats unless they can easily uh, touch the base on either a hot shot to third or grounder up the middle to Martin so more than likely they got to go to first 3-2 Two down, Tano on second, Jansky on first. Wolfpack leading two nothing. Out hitting the Wildcats today, five to two. 
two double, two singles, two doubles, and that home run by Widener has gotten him to those five hits. Barry's keeping an eye on Atano. See if he can catch him leaving early. Maybe get the easy out. Berlin, like I said, going to Hamlin. Curveball misses in. So now we're gonna have bases loaded as uh, Berlin has walked. Two down here in the top of the fifth. That's gonna bring up Tessman. Tessman had a double in the second inning. Went over to third on a grounder, a slow roller to uh, shortstop Martin and then came in to score on the errant throw by Hughesman at third. That was the first run of the game by the Wolfpack. Uh, Tessman then flew out to Chapman. It looked like it was uh, right along the lines of either fair or foul territory. It might have been just a, about a foot or two foul, his second at bat. Coach Tom Booski, pitching coach Tom Booski, out to talk to Barry, his senior, Mr. Uh, Booski. Played his collegiate ball with the uh, Golden Gophers as well. It was a flamethrower for the Golden Gophers. But I think that's all he wants me to say about uh, his mound time for the U. Runs the local uh, Minnesota MASH workout and baseball facility. And then helps out with the Wildcats with the pitchers. Calls the game from the bench as well. All righty, two down. Bases are plumb and full. Hatano at third, Jansky at second, Berlin at first, first pitch. Strike on the outside corner at the knees. Liam Martin lifts his hands going, where was that pitch last at bat? 0-1, two down. Curveball outside for a ball. Hatano had a one out single, Jansky had a one out single, Berlin had a 3-2, two out walk. 1-1's the count, outfield and infield playing straight up to Tessman, ball in the dirt for a ball. So big pitch here, as Barry doesn't want to get to 3-1. Pitching out of the windup, so that's gonna give Chansky and even Berlin a little bit more room to get a lead. Two down here on the top of the fifth. Base hit out to left to Lockenmeyer. McGow Coach McGowan's gonna hold up Jansky at third. Patano does come around to score, and it's three nothing Wolfpack. As Tessman comes through with his second hit of the day and an RBI. So he's got a single and a double. And now the lead is three nothing Wolfpack here in the top of the fifth. Two down, bases are still loaded. Jansky on first with that, or excuse me, on third with that one out single. Berlin with that two out walk and the RBI single with two outs by Tessman. Tessman's finding some real estate out in left as he had a double in left center and now an RBI single in left. Strike right away to the catcher, Jackson Widener. Widener had the big solo smash in the fourth that got up and out quick on the 0-1 pitch as that ball gets between the legs of Stefan and that's gonna bring in Jansky. So a rare pass ball by Stefan. Jansky scores, that moves everybody up. No more force out, now the play's at one. One one's a count, two down, and the Wolfpack are leading four nothing to Egan. Barry's still working out of the windup. Curveball in there for a strike. One two's a count, Barry's gotta get tough like he has been all year. Has to find his way out of this inning. And the Wildcats need to get the bats going. There's a big curveball, swung on and missed, and held on by Stefan for strike three. So he does retire Widener. So four, the Wolfpack in the top of the fifth, two runs on three hits, no errors, and two left on. So after four and a half complete. The Wolfpack four and the Wildcats at Egan zero. We'll be back in 30 seconds for the bottom of the fifth inning here of the Section 3 4A championship game.
right, here we're back. Bottom of the fifth inning as Messmacher's finishing up his uh, warm-up throws. For the Wildcats, they're going to have their uh, left fielder, Alex Lockemeyer, will be leading off here in the bottom of the fifth. Uh, for Lockemeyer, he did have a single, and the first single of the game for the Wildcats. Uh, two out, or two, uh, two strike single, actually. High hopper up the middle, and then he did steal second base. So uh, Lockemeyer does have speed and always is a threat to get in motion. We'll see how aggressive Egan is down 4-0 here in the top of the fifth. They're just going to want to probably get some base runners and keep people moving station to station. First pitch by Mestemacher. Fastball's low. Mestemacher's been doing an excellent job here today of keeping the Wildcats off balance. Uh, for the most part, it's been fastball outside, inside, and low. Um, as it mixed in with some off speed. There's a fastball that's in for a ball. So Messmacher did have a long inning to sit through as the Wolfpack did have bases loaded there twice in that last inning. Scored on the RBI single from Tessman and then also scored on a pass ball. And another fastball inside. So 3-0, quickly 3-0 to Lockemeyer. Messmacher, as I mentioned, going to Hamlin as well as the third baseman, Berlin, and then uh, Sam Chapman, the right fielder for the Wildcats, will be going to Hamlin as well. 3-0 pitch in their first strike. Much to the dismay of the youthful Wildcats congregation. Three ones are count, nobody out here. Bottom of the fifth inning. Wolfpack leading 4 nothing. High hopper. Berlin tacks it, gets his throw in time to Smoot. So a high hopper over to Berlin, but Berlin does a nice job of attacking it and getting rid of it quickly to Smoot to get out the speedy Lockemeyer. We'll take a quick look here. High hopper as we watch get down the line, gets beat by about a step and a half. Closer than some may have thought, but Berlin did a nice job of charging that. Fastball on the outside corner to Charlie Steffen, the catcher, for a strike. So 0-1's our count. Steffen grounded out to the second baseman, Flatham, his first time up. 0-1 pitch from Messemacher. Fastball, it gets past Steffen. Messemacher, like I said, is a more of a uh, uses defense than a, a strikeout pitcher. 21 strikeouts to 11 walks and a 3.86 ERA. 0-2 pitch. Popped up and out. So 0-2, one down. Wolfpack leading 4 nothing here at Alabama Field. Section 3-4A championship game. Wolfpack will have to beat the Wildcats twice to advance, whereas the Wildcats just need to win one of these games, either this one or the second one. There's a line shot foul, hot shot foul, but foul by about eight feet. Stefan hitting about 220 on the season. Two stolen bases, nine RBIs, six walks, two doubles. But the big home run, like I said, against Shakopee. Curveball, checks the swing, which I don't even know if we're gonna have to check that or not. But yeah, Charlie had the uh, big home run, the solo shot. Down at uh, Schlepper Field, down in Shakopee, as the Wildcats won an early road game, one to nothing, and a wonderfully pitched game by Daniel Biancamano. Who the Wildcats would love to have in their stable here today in, in the postseason. Unfortunately, Daniel uh, had an arm injury late in the season. Well, excuse me hit that Johnson's got a beat on. And that fly ball is caught after Stefan battles the count from 0-2, but he does fly out to Johnson. Bring up the right fielder, number 27, Sam Chapman. And actually, uh, looks like the Hamlin enrollee is going to get pulled for a pinch hitter here. I'm going to bring in the youngster, the sophomore, David Rockford. This guy uh, pretty much got called up during the playoffs. And his first ever high school at bat had a base hit right up the middle. Uh, mainly used as a pinch runner. But he uh, has scored two runs on the season, hit by pitch. And like I said, first ever high school at bat, line shot up the middle by the sophomore. 
So Rockford is going to pinch it here for Chapman. First pitch from Mestemacher to low and inside. Bottom of the fifth, four nothing is our score. Wolfpack leading four nothing over Egan Wildcats. Egan just having a hard time getting uh, more than one guy on base here in any. Fastball flipped out to the left, but not gonna have enough as Atano runs it down. So, for the Wildcats in the bottom of the fifth, no runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. After five complete, the Wolfpack of Park Cottage Grove leading four to nothing over the Egan Wildcats. We'll be back. 30 seconds for the top of the sixth inning. Welcome back, Alan Magna Field, as we have the top of the sixth inning. Wolfpack of Park Cottage Grove leading four nothing over the Egan Wildcats. Wolfpack of the number three seed, Egan Wildcats number two seed. As we bring up the designated hitter, Tucker Novotny. He's batting for the pitcher, Connor Mestemacher. Novotny, a University of Minnesota Golden Gophers enrollee, or signee if I should say so. It's a hot shot past the diving Huseman. First pitch, single for Novotny. So the Wolfpack out hitting the Wildcats seven to two. As that's gonna now bring up the second baseman, Zach Flatham, who's going to St. John's. I think we're gonna have a little pinch runner action for Tucker Novotny, and that'll be number 11, Blake Johnson. Novotny on the season, as we mentioned, 31 RBIs, two homers. It's his pitching that is pencil thin with a 1.49 ERA. And he's got the big K arm. He's got 101 strikeouts on the season. I'm trying to see how many innings that is. 55 innings, so he's averaging uh, almost two strikeouts an inning. Only 23 walks. And he was, uh, looks like nine and one on the season. So it'll be interesting to see if what he has left in the tank, if he's gonna be potentially pitching game two or not. Nobody down here, top of the six. It was a bunt attempt, but it looked like it might have been fouled off. So now we're gonna get a little conversation here. Pinch runner that was in was Blake Johnson, and that was Flatham. Flatham did offer at it. It's hard to know if it hit his bat or hit his hand. I think Coach Butler would just like the uh, home plate ump to actually just uh, maybe have a little conference here and see what the two field umps, field officials saw in that play as well. So we might get we might get a little bit of that conference that he was hoping to have. But just like any other coach, they're gonna fight for their team and fight for that pitch and fight for that strike. So we're gonna see what we got here amongst the uh, our three officials. Otherwise, this could be a, a beginning of a potential big inning here for the Wolfpack. Novotny had the base hit on the first pitch at the top of the inning. He's being pinch ran for it by number 11, Blake Johnson. And now we're waiting to see if Flatham's gonna get first or not, and he does. So Flatham does get first on that hit by pitch. And that's gonna bring up that's gonna bring up the center fielder, number 10, Ben Johnson. So we're gonna have Blake Johnson, the pinch runner on second, running for Novotny after he had that leadoff single. 
Vladim on first base after the hit by pitch as he was attempting to bunt. Hard to say where it got him. And now Coach Butler is going to be talking things out over with Barry as well as his infield. Number nine hitter up, so most would assume that a bunt's going to be put in place. And that's going to mean that Barry's going to have to more than likely cover the third baseline, and Harms is going to be coming in hard from his first base spot. And that's also going to make Amon have to hustle over from first, or excuse me, from second base to cover first. For the Wolfpack, they're obviously trying to get uh, get both runners in the scoring position as they're ready to flip the top, flip their lineup over to Atano, their leadoff hitter. So we'll see what happens here with Ben Johnson, the center fielder. Johnson on the day, grounded out to third. And I believe struck out as well. Wolfpack out hitting the Wildcats, seven to two. Both teams have one air on the day. The first air, though, was costly. The one and only air was costly. As we see a pickoff play that's thrown into center field. And Anderson might have had a chance to relay it into third, but he overran it. So a pickoff play was put on. Barry spun and threw an errant throw past Amon. Anderson <laughs> came in a little too hot. Ball gets underneath his glove, whereas he might have been able to make a one hop throw to third to potentially get Johnson because Johnson didn't leave right away. Didn't know that the ball was in center. So runners on the corners now. Pinch runner is Blake Johnson at third. Flatham on first. Ben Johnson at the plate. Fake bunt. I don't know if that was a safety squeeze attempt for a ball. He's been playing in at third. Middle infield playing normal depth. Potentially give up the run for two outs on a double play ball. Wolfpack of Park of Cottage Grove leading four nothing here in the top of the six. Egan running out of opportunities while the Wolfpack are still knocking on the door. One O's are count. The senior Barry throw into the senior teammate, Stefan, curveball in the outside corner for a strike 1-1. One, one. So if they're able to get a strikeout, that is a strikeout or infield fly would be key here for the Wildcats. And then they can leave open the opportunity to potentially get the speedy Atano on a double play ball. One ones are count, top of the six here at El Magnet. Throw over for Barry to Harms. As Flatham gets in safely. Center fielder Ben Johnson at the plate. Grounded out to Hughesman at third. Another throw over as Flatham gets back. And the strikeout is second at bat. One one pitch. Barry to Ben Johnson, the center fielder. Big swing on a curveball for strike two. Johnson maybe got a little excited there. I mean, just needs something as simple as a ground ball on the right side. Pop up medium depth to the outfield should get Blake Johnson, the pinch runner, in to score that fifth run for the Wild, for the Wolfpack. One two's the count. Barry looking into the signs. They'll fake to third and throw over. The Wiley veteran Barry using all the tricks up his sleeve to see if he can catch an easy out from the Wolfpack. But the Wolfpack are smart on the base pass here early on. There's another curveball, but bounce foul down third baseline. Johnson hanging tough. One two's the count. Nobody down here. Top of the six, Wolfpack leading 4 nothing here at Alamagna Field. The first of potentially two games here today. Flat, flat him getting a decent lead at first, but nothing too crazy knowing that there's no need for him to get picked off. 
And there's what they wanted as Johnson hits one out to Chapman. Chapman's going to make the out. That's going to bring in the pinch runner, Blake Johnson. And that's going to be the fifth run. As Johnson gets an RBI fly out to Chapman. So now it's 5 nothing, one down. There's still the double play still intact. As Flatham still at first. The shortstop, Josh Atano. Two strikeouts looking early on, but then he did have that single, the one-out single in the fifth, and then he came around to score on Tessman's RBI single. One down, you see a throw over once again, trying to keep Flatham close. Atano, as you mentioned, 378 on the season, 28 RBIs, two home runs, five stolen bases. Barry looks in for his pitch. Ball in the dirt, nice job by Charlie Steffen. I always feel for the catchers on, a, on these hot days. So much to work, nothing but dirt and sweat all around him. Ooh, and that one might have got Steffen's hand a little bit there. The time will follow that one back. One one's a count. One out, top of the six. Wolfpack have scored in the second. They scored one in the second, one in the fourth, two in the fifth, and have scored one so far in the sixth. Scored on that errant throw in the second, and then the, the big momentum boost might have been the home run, the solo shot by Widener in the top of the fourth. See a uh, nicked one just fouled on the left field line, an off-speed pitch Atano did, and one twos are count. Flat him at first base. He, Reached first on the uh, squared around a bunt, got beaned. A little bit of a conference, but they said that uh, it wasn't a str it wasn't going to be considered a foul ball or an offer. One down, one twos are count. Lead off here to the shortstop, Josh Hatano. As he flips one over to the right side, Harms gets it, throws it to Martin. Martin relays over to Barry, not in time. But Harms does a nice job of fielding his position with a strong throw on target throw to Martin to get the lead runner flattened at second. So now we have two down. So now we'll see if they maybe potentially put Atano in motion. As I mentioned, he leads the team with five stone bases. Sam Jansky, left fielder, steps in. He is two for three on the day. He had a double to right center that he was stranded on, but then he did have a uh, hit in the fifth, a one-out hit in the fifth, and they came around to score on a pass ball. Off-speed in there for a strike, two down here, top of the six, five-nothing, Wolfpack leading. Wolfpack came into the season uh, 17 at six, I believe. Actually, I think they were 18 and five. The Wildcats were 17 and six. <laughs> so fouls went off on the right side, O2s are count. Uh, as we mentioned, the Wolfpack are on a three-game winning streak. As they, uh, after they lost 15 to nothing in five innings to Egan last Wednesday, beat Eastview on Friday 5-1, so it came, came back through the, the loser's bracket. Then on Monday, they beat Lakeville North 12-4. And then yesterday, they beat Rosemont 9-8. Slow roll over to Amon, fields it, throw over in time to Harms to retire Jansky the third out of the inning. So, for the Wolfpack, they do get that one run. Let me see here. One run on one hit. Yeah, one run on one hit, no errors, and then one left on. So, after five and a half complete, it is the Wolfpack five and the Wildcats zero. I'm gonna give you a couple more announcements here in a second, yeah. So I mentioned before about e ETV, you can follow ETV on Facebook. It's as simple as facebook.com backslash Egan TV. So just like Twitter, get all of your updates, learn about the upcoming broadcasts, the programming, um, anything that's happening in the area, and that's a good place to find it on Facebook or on Twitter. So once again, it's facebook.com backslash Egan TV. I'm gonna once again read the Minnesota State High School League reminder. And they remind us that the educational value of this event is more important than its outcome. Respect for others, including opponents, 
and officials is one of those values. Support today's teams with the respect that they deserve. As we said earlier, first pitch time, it was about a balmy 98 degrees, feeling like 101. They said that there could be winds up to seven miles an hour southeast. Slight breeze that hasn't really affected any of our play today. As we're watching Mestemacher getting his warm-up pitches as he comes out for the sixth inning. Mestemacher's done a nice job, only giving up two hits. Uh, two hits and I think one walk. So I have him down for four strikeouts here early on. So the number nine hitter is going to be coming up here. That's going to be a third baseman, number 11, Will Huseman. Huseman grounded out to third his first time up. So... That's kind of the big difference of today's game is uh, Liam Martin will be coming up now for the third time only in the sixth inning, whereas uh, Park has already kind of gotten through their lineup a few more times. First pitch by Messemacher is a strike. Bottom of the six, five nothing is our score. Messemacher throwing a gem of a game here early on, ball in the dirt for a ball. Wolf, or excuse me, the Wildcats have only gotten one got one leadoff batter on, and that was Liam Martin, who had a walk in the top or the bottom of the first, but then was erased on that 6-4-3 double play. Another strike low, so one two's our count. Messmacher looks like he's kind of on that maybe 70-30 percentile of fastball to curveball or fastball to off speed. For the most part, it's just been fastball. But he's been doing a nice job of keeping it away from the middle of the plate and also just not letting it rise up. There's a rip by Hughesman. Johnson's got a beat on it once again. That one he does run down. So that's twice now that Johnson's in a nice job in center field. Running down some hard shots. One by Amon, the second one now by Hughesman. And he makes that play about five feet from the fence. So both times it looks like uh, Amon and Hughesman maybe just got underneath that a little bit, but Johnson uh, covering plenty of ground out in center field. As we take a little replay of it, didn't get full extension on it, but Johnson, nice job running it down. Actually, he was probably about 15 feet from the fence, maybe 10, but shaded in the right direction. Liam, Nil Liam Martin, shortstop. First pitch is there, strike. So Liam has a walk and then reached first on the air by Atano, but then was picked off to end the inning. Fastball up for a ball. One one's a count, one down. Bottom of the six here. Wolfpack leading five, nothing over the Wildcats. Mestemacher, starting pitcher, been on the mound all game. Only one walk. There's a ground ball to Atano. Atano charges it. His throw over to Smoot time for the second out of the inning. So a routine ground ball by Martin, that Atano easily corrals, strong arm over to Smoot for the second out of the inning. Second baseman now will be coming up number five, Mason Armin. Mason Armin has gone to center field twice. One he got underneath was a routine pop fly. Second one was about maybe five feet or so short of the fence, but he just got under a little bit. Two down here, bottom of the six, Al Magnet Field, section three, four A championship game. Off speed in there for a strike. Ball in the dirt. One one's our count. Amen, as I mentioned earlier, 317 through 21 games, 19 hits and 60 at bats, eight runs. Six RBIs in that two hole. Eight stolen bases. Seven walks. As he hits a ground ball to Atano. Nice and easy flip over to Smoot again. So back to back ground balls to Atano. Retires Martin and then Amon for the Wildcats in the bottom of the six. No runs and no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. After six complete, it is the Wolfpack of Park Cottage Grove five and the Wildcats of Egan zero. We'll be back in 30 seconds for the top of the seventh inning.
righty, welcome back. Allen Magna Field, Section 3-4A Championship as the Wolfpack, the number three seed, coming through the loser's bracket with the lead here. Top of the seventh, they're up 5-0. They're out hitting the Wildcats 7-2. Both teams have one air on the board. But the Wildcats are taking advantage of timely hitting, a pass ball score to run, a Aaron throw from third brought in the first run, and a big smash by Widener, the catcher, for a solo shot in the fourth. Lincoln Barry, the senior, still on the mound. And he's facing the first baseman, Will Smoot. Smoot offers, flips one out to right. The new right fielder is David Rockford. And he makes the catch. So Rockford pinch hit for Shackman. And has stayed in the game in right field as he retires Smoot on the fly ball to right. Third base. Watch the pop up. Harms had a little bit of a beat on it, but the old Williams asks the deal where the hat comes off on a pop fly, and he makes the catch in fall territory. Clayton Berlin is going to Hamlin, third baseman, now up. He had a walk his last at bat, fly out to, or pop up to short, as it's quickly 2-0 to Berlin. Fly out to short to Martin, a grounder to Martin, and then a walk. It's a two hopper to Hughesman. Hughesman, a high throw, it's gonna get past Harms. Berlin's gonna stay at first for an air on the throw by Hughesman. Second errant throw by Hughesman here today, as he had one in the second that brought in a run. It's gonna bring in a pinch runner. That'll be Cole Kirchner. You watch a two hopper by Berlin as he hustles down the line. And that ball just sailed on Hughesman. Had plenty of time, but it still had him by about three steps. Okay, so Jackson Tessman, the right fielder, comes in. The pinch runner is Cole Kirchner, as he's going to run for Berlin. One down here in the top of the seventh. Wolfpack leading 5 nothing. Tessman having a nice day at the plate. Check swing is in for a strike. Had the first hit of the game, a double out to left center. Which he scored the first run of the game on that errant throw with two outs. And then he had a RBI single his last time up as well. So two for three on the day, he had a fly out to right as well. Barry takes a quick throw over to see if he can grab Kirchner for that out at first. One down, top of the seventh. Five zeros are scored with the Wolfpack leading the Wildcats. This time he flips one out to left, but Lockmeyer only has to move about two steps to his right for that second out of the inning. Testman gets underneath that one to left field. So two down, that's gonna bring up the catcher, Jackson Widener, who had the big smash, maybe the momentum smash of the day for the Wolfpack, that solo shot in the fourth to make it go from a one nothing lead, he doubled it up and made it two nothing. He's going to Northern State. Widener, one for three with that home run, a K strikeout and a ground out to short. Kirchner, the pinch runner at first for Berlin. That curveball misses up. Barry looking to close this thing out, save any arms that he can for the Wildcats. Because without a big comeback, they're gonna be playing a second game. As you see a pop up. Looks like Harms has a beat on it. He's gonna put him right on the base and he makes the play. So, so for the Wolfpack in the top of the seven, no runs on no hits. There was that one errant throw and one left on. And after six and a half complete, the Wolfpack five and the Wildcats zero. We're back in 30 seconds for the bottom of the seventh inning here from the Allen Magnet Field.
All righty, welcome back to Alameda Field, Section 3, 4A Championship Game. The Wolfpack working on making the big comeback through the uh, loser's bracket. As I mentioned earlier, they've won three in a row after losing to Egan at Wildcat Park in Egan last Wednesday. They lost to the Wildcats 15 to nothing. And they kind of flipped that around now as they've been blanking the Wildcats here today. Five nothing is our score. So without a big time comeback, potential of that second game. So as we see Mestamacher's first pitch is a ball to the senior pitcher, Lincoln Barry. Barry today hit into a double play, had a single, and then he stole, stole the base as well. Mestamacher's second pitch, ripped down the line, but foul. About three feet foul over the uh, officials the umps head down the third baseline. One ones are count. Five nothing is our score. Bottom of the seventh, Messemacher working the gem of a game. I have him down four. Four strikeouts. Two hits and one walk. Curveball misses for a ball. Two one. Always interesting to wonder if uh, coaching staff makes the uh, hitters when you're down like this in the seventh inning to take a strike or not. Yeah. Barry takes a big whack but gets underneath it. That's gonna be hit out to Tessman and right. And he makes the play. So the all important first out after they get the number three hitter, Barry, on the fly ball to right to Tessman. So that's gonna bring up Charlie Harms, the first baseman, who has struck out and flew out to right. Wildcats, as I mentioned, only have two hits. And uh, that was Barry had a hit his second time up, and Lockamere had a hit his first time up. Fastball outside corner for a strike. You can tell Messebacher real comfortable throwing to the lefties, trying to paint the outside corner. More so to righties on the outside corner. One down. Fastball low, one one's a count. Five nothings are score. It doesn't need a hitter Griffin Fenske on deck. Off speed misses outside. Mestemacher gonna play baseball next year at Hamlin along with his third baseman, Clayton Burleen. And then for the Wildcats, Sam Chapman, the right fielder, is planning on playing at Hamlin next year as well. Two ones are count. Fastball in there for a strike on the knees. Two, two. One down. Section three, four, A championship. Wolfpack need to beat Egan twice to advance. Egan needs to get one win here to advance. Harms, hot shot. Smoot and dropped. So Smoot got his glove on it, knocked it down. Picked it up bare hand like you're supposed to, and then maybe a little too much hot sauce on that throw over to Mestemacher as he was covering up the line. So Harms gets on first on the air. It's tough to say if it was an air on the throw or air on the play. And Parker Fowles gonna pinch run for the Wildcats. That's gonna bring up the designated hitter, Griffin Fenske. Pinch running for Harms, number six, Parker Fowles. that we'll see Parker Fowl in motion. We're gonna see a quick replay here. As I said, uh, Smoot got his glove on it, picked it up bare hand, but maybe a little too hot of a throw over to Mestemacher. Maybe also a little bit behind him at the same time. Fastball in there for a strike by Mestemacher. Fenske on the day, two strikeouts. Parker Fowl is a threat to run as he has about five stolen bases on the year, but doubtful that Coach Butler is going to put him in motion, being down 5 0 here in the seventh, with already one down. Got to play safe, need runners, got to go station to station, hope for a big hit. Nice play by Widener, again. He's been a brick wall back there. He hasn't had anything get past him yet today, whether there's been a runner on base or not. One ones are count, one down. Pinch runner Parker Fall is at first for Charlie Harms who gained first on that air by Smoot. As I mentioned, Fenske 
has a hot bat coming into today. Had a big three-run smash against Rosemount here on Monday, and then fouled that up with a triple next at bat. Fouls one off, one two's the count. The Wolfpack playing Fenske for the most part straight up. A little bit of a shift on the left fielder towards the left, towards the line. Johnson playing a little bit left of the base. Fastball low, that one, another nice block by Widener that keeps Parker Fall at first. Infield once again playing Fenske straight up as well. So I haven't seen much of a shift or movement from either team today. Both uh, coaching staffs trusting their pitchers, their, their seniors, and uh, no need to get maybe too gimmicky, whatever, with their fielders. There's a hot shot to Flatham. Flatham relays it to Smoot, and that double play is going to get Parker Fall out. I think even if Parker Fall freezes on that play, I think he's still caught out on that line drive. So for the Wildcats in the bottom of the seventh, no runs, no hits. That one air and nobody left on. So here we go. Now, I'm gonna give you a quick little recap, if I can, of today's game. And then we'll give you the instructions for game number two as well. So quick recap, Metzemacher went all seven as well as Barry went all seven. Both seniors did a nice job on the mound. Uh, Barry got hit up uh, for seven hits. Uh, three of them were extra base hits, two doubles, as well as that home run by Widener. For Messemacher, he did end up with uh, five strikeouts, only those two hits and one walk. For Barry, he had seven strikeouts, but he did have, I, I believe, all five runs were earned with a hit by two hit by pitches and no walks. So what's gonna happen here now is they're going to uh, do the coin flip to figure out who will be home. Um, I think we'll be starting somewhere between 20, 25 minutes or so, allow pitchers to get loose. And then what we're gonna do here for Egan TV though, is we're just gonna keep this live running. So if you wanna eat or go on away from your computer, uh, your phone, whatever it may be, your check-in maybe in a half hour or so, uh, we'll be back live, I'll just be off the air. Uh, maybe have some music and we'll have just the feed kind of from behind the uh, grandstand here uh, live as uh, people are probably going to stretch it out a little bit and walk it off as they work on the field to get everything ready. So that's our plan. So just a quick recap though, Park did win this game 5-0. Uh, that's their fourth win in a row from the uh, loser's bracket side of things. Egan, in, this is the all-important game now. Uh, basically the winner of this game will be advancing. So. Uh, we're going to wait and see here which, who's going to be starting and get lineups and all that good stuff. But we'll keep it here live for you, and then we'll be back at the start of our second game. So thank you for joining the first game. Once again, I want to say thank you to all of our crew here. Greg Borman on the camera, Joe Chupik on camera. Our engineer today is Dalton Gruber, and our producer is Josh Sibley. I'm Casey Lux. We'll be back in about 20, 25 minutes for game two of the Section 3 4A Championship. Thank you, and we'll be back.
Blue Rhino Studio. I've been the owner here. We're a custom artistic design and fabrication studio. We focus primarily on work for natural history museums around the world. We create dinosaurs, animals, dioramas, plants, anything that captures people's imaginations. My name is Christina Miller, and I'm the executive director here at U.S. Math Recovery Council. U.S. Math Recovery Council offers courses for educators, primarily educators in K through eight, and primarily in mathematics. Hi, I'm Ramon Ruiz. I'm the owner of Andiamo Italian Ristorante in Egan. With over 2,300 businesses and nonprofits that call Egan home, we know that our success is driven by thriving, large, mid-sized, and small businesses. Our world changed in 2020, including the outlook for many businesses and nonprofits in our community. I never thought it was going to be so hard to run a business with this uh, pandemic going on right now. We've been definitely experienced, you know, some different times. We've been doing uh, a lot of catering, a lot of takeout. Uh, we do whatever it takes, you know, to bring revenue up. Everything changed once COVID happened uh, because we do a lot of international work and the United States was a little later to the COVID infection game. A lot of projects that we were working on we started getting Rome museums possibly closing. And then in March, kind of everything did around the world. As soon as COVID hit, we needed to take all of our face-to-face -face courses and transfer them to an online and virtual environment. CARES was authorized by the federal government to help lessen the impact of COVID on businesses and other organizations. Businesses submitted online applications and we worked with them to verify that they met the requirements set forth by the federal government. Usually when the city develops new programs, we spend months doing it. We look at what other cities have done and look at the best practices and what to do and what not to do. In this case, no one had done this before and we had a matter of weeks to create a program and deliver funding. There really wasn't a lot of time to get done what we had to get done and it took a lot of coordination between all the different departments. We were kind of the last piece of the puzzle and getting the check cut was a great way to finish out the project uh, with us to be able to write the checks and, and uh, get them out the door. All in all, between the time of application submittal and when we were able to send a grant, it was less than a month. When I got the email that we got the chance to apply for the CARES money, and we apply, and thanks to the community, they know us, what we do here and what we've been doing in the past years, we got 10 grants, so that really helped me to, uh, to keep going. The timing on this grant was uh, perfect. As the pandemic continued to uh, go, you know, month after month, um, it became increasingly difficult to maintain staffing and to support both our local vendors. Each of our courses has a kit that a teacher receives. Those materials, like handbooks and things like that, are all sourced locally as much as possible. The Egan Cares Grant kept everybody fed and employed. <laughs> I, it, it literally, there, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of months in this last year that were pretty scary. And so anybody who was willing to, to step up and help us out, um, I, I just can't possibly express how grateful we are to people, you know, the community and, you know, investing in our survival. You got to really focus in uh, helping your employees and uh, making sure you're doing the right thing to be safe. We paying bills, we paying employees. We get in there, but I know it's not, it, it's not easy to keep doing what we're doing. We get to come here every day. We get to, we get to make dinosaurs. It's a, it's a whole group of adult children. So allowing us to not have to cut people from a staff or cut our work week down or not be able to be as aggressive as we were with pricing some of these things just to keep moving. It's just another one of those pieces that made our life possible. Truly the forethought and the um, emphasis that the City of Egan puts into their businesses has really made this just a really great experience our two to three years that we've been in here. We in finance kind of like to be behind the scenes. That's, the, that's our nature. Uh, but when we did this project with, uh, with everybody, all the other different departments, it felt like we were actually right on the front lines. It felt like we were really making a difference. It was one of the most positive things that we could do to just help the businesses in our community. I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the City of Egan, uh, to the community of Egan, uh, for the CARES Act grant for this uh, support for us as 
small businesses, as nonprofits inside of the community. I'm here to thank all the community in Egan. We have a, a lot of regular customers that have been here since day one. People from the city hall have been really helpful. Thank you for supporting Andiamo and keep doing it. My job is to employ people and, and do things, and it, it got pretty scary for quite a while. So when the Egan, you know, when Egan stepped up and offered to help us out, it's incredibly personal to me. Um, and I, I can't express enough gratitude. So to have, you know, have the community come back and, and offer to help us out meant the world. You know, it, it, it meant we got to keep working.
All righty, welcome back to Alamagnet Field. This is the second game of the Section 3 4A Championship game as Park Cottage Grove had their fourth win in a row coming up from the loser's bracket and beat Egan 5-0 in the earlier game. We're kind of on the edge of a little bit maybe of a small cell, so hopefully we're just on the edge of it and it's mainly just windy and not rain, but we are ready to go. So you gotta kind of bear with us. It's a little windy for one of our cameras um, and uh, obviously our replay monitor, we're gonna keep that down, so, um, but we'll still be calling the game and you'll still get a good feed of it. So with that said, uh, instead of giving you the full lineups and so on and so forth, we'll just kind of give you the game as, as the players are coming up. So I'll start off by saying this though, starting on the mound today for Park will be Sam Jansky. So he's going to move from left field to his pitch. He's going to pitch. And then out in left field is going to be Micah Runyon. First pitch to Liam Martin, the shortstop, is going to be a strike in the outside corner. Liam Martin, shortstop, will be followed up by Mason Amin, the second baseman. It's going to be pretty much the same lineup for Egan as well as for Park. Fastball's up for a ball. 1 1 is our count. So, winner of this game will be advancing out of state. So now we're at the win and go. Win and move on and lose and go home. 1-1 one, one count to Martin. Ball low. Jansky, a junior. And we'll get into some of his pitching stats here as the game goes on. Egan is the away team as Park won the coin toss. Strike on the outside corner. Liam Martin, early signee for Cal Santa Barbara. As he swings and misses on that off speed for strike for the first out as he strikes out to Jansky. Mason Amen, the senior, will come up the second baseman. Egan uh, looking to kind of get something rolling early as he only had two hits last game. Two hits and uh, one walk, so. Not too many runners on base for Egan in that first game. Amon shows a drag, but fouls it off. May run into a small delay here, depending on if we do get a little bit of a rain or downpour. But we just got to uh, be flexible and move along here. Two main changes in the Egan lineup, and I'll get to those in a second. Fastball low. Uh, for Egan, though, they will have David Rockford, the sophomore, will be playing right field. And then George Anderson will be batting today. And then the designated hitter will be Griffin Fenske, and he'll be, a he'll be hitting for the pitcher, Ryan Danich. Fouled off by Amon. Now we're at 1 2. Now we get to see who wins the season series between Egan and Park. They both have split. Egan winning 15-0 last week. Ball low in a five-inning route. 15 hits at Egan last Wednesday. And then Park winning 5-0 the earlier game today. Amon drives one to center, but looks like Johnson's once again has got to beat it. And this time the wind's going to hold it up. So Amon has been popping them to center, but uh, now that we got the, the storm coming through, that's where the wind now is picking up. We're gonna need to be hitting the ball on the ground here. The second game, they're hitting it low. Lincoln Bear, the senior, pitched the first game. He'll be playing third base here today. First pitch by Jansky's low for ball. One knows the count, two down here in the top of the first, Alamagnet Park. Swing and a miss on an off speed in the outside corner. Sam Jansky moving in from left field to pitch here. And Micah Runyon is now playing left field. Otherwise, it's the same infield and outfield for Park. Fastball outside corner for a strike. One, two. Ripped by Barry, wind's gonna hold it up. Johnson's got a beat on it, makes the play. So for Egan in the uh, top of the first, no runs and no hits, no errors and nobody left on. 
and we'll keep it here through. Uh, we'll keep it here through the uh, bottom of the first, and I can actually that way I'll uh, I can announce the lineup for Park. So for Park, it's going to be a very similar lineup. It's going to be Josh Hatano, the shortstop, will lead off. The pitcher now today, the second game is Sam Jansky. He'll be followed up by Will Smoot, the first baseman. Clayton Berlin is the third baseman. He'll be batting in the fourth spot. Jackson Tessman, once again, will be in the fifth spot. He'll be out in right field. The catcher, who had the big home run in the first game, the solo shot that when it made it from 1-0 uh, to 2-0, doubled it up. Uh, Jackson Widener will be uh, hitting in the fifth spot. Excuse me, sixth spot. Tucker Novotny will be doing the DHing again, second game. University of Minnesota commit. Micah Runyon will be out in left field. And then Ben Johnson will be in center. And uh, Novotny will be hitting for the second baseman, Zach Flatham. So we're going to be looking at uh, Hatano, Jansky, and Smoot here. On the mound for the Wildcats will be Ryan Danich, and he'll be throwing to, once again, catching Charlie Steffen. As far as Danich goes, um, kind of the do-it-all guy for the Wildcats. Mainly a late-inning reliever, uh, but at the same time, at the same time, uh, can start, and we'll see how long he goes. He's kind of a, I don't know, I'd say maybe 60-40 curveball to fastball ratio, maybe even 70-30. Uh, but he's got a heavy hammer, a heavy deuce that's going to probably be, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe 11 to 5 uh, coming into your, into your screen with a hard, sharp curveball. There's a fastball in there for a strike. So it'll be interesting to see how he sets up this Wolfpack lineup if it's off speed early or if it's he tried to get some fastballs placed and then the strikeout pitch with the curveball late in the count. Atano, leading off, had a single with a run in the first game and his first shot is out to right to David Rockford for a hit. So Atano leads off with a single. That'll bring up the pitcher, Sam Jansky. As we mentioned, Atano, five stolen bases on the season. Batting 378, Jansky batting 439 with four stolen bases on the season. Bottom of the first, Wolfpack are the home team due to winning the coin toss. First pitch swung on, popped up to Amon at second as he makes the play. So one pitch retires Jansky and that'll bring up the first baseman Will Smoot. A little drizzle here. We still got some sunshine though, so a little sun shower. Wind blowing in a little bit from right center. There's a curveball, nice block by Stefan. But the wind's definitely picked up since that cell's kind of been moving up 35. We might be just on the outer ridge, so we're hoping that maybe it just cools down a little bit. Little sprinkles, and then we got some good baseball night nightcap. One O's are count here to smooth the first baseman. There's another curveball, nice block once again by Stefan. So as I said, it's about 70-30 is what you're gonna see the ratio for curveballs and fastballs, and you're definitely gonna see those curveballs early and often to the uh, well, probably the top of the lineup, but at least uh, three through six hitters. Smoot, the first uh, game had uh, just was hit by a pitch. That was his only time getting on base. Tano's off and running, Stefan's throw down, not in time. Tano on second with his sixth stolen base of the season. Picked the right pitch, picked an off speed, now it's 3-0 to Smoot with first base open. So first time we've seen uh, Wolfpack get some of their runners in motion. But as I mentioned in that first game, they went double, double, then home run. So they really didn't have much opportunity to send anybody. And then when they were getting singles, they had uh, runners in front of them. So mainly Atano and Jansky look to be the ones that, that uh, potentially can steal. There's a fastball outside, low for a ball. So now we got runners on. We got Atano on first after a leadoff single and Smoot on 
excuse me, a tenner on second. Smoot on first with a walk. Third baseman now comes up, which is Clayton Berlin. Uh, Clayton had a walk the first game and then reached on a errant throw to, from third. One down here, bottom of the first. Wolfpack looking to threaten early. Fastball outside corner in there for a strike. We'll get you some damage stats here once maybe the drizzle stops. Egan once again playing straight up. Oh one, one out. Fastball up. So the two main changes in the Egan lineup, you got Rockford, the sophomore, playing right field for Shatman here. And then George Anderson will hit for himself as Fenske will be hitting for the pitcher Danich. There's a strike on the outside corner. One, two. Smoot on first after a four pitch walk. Atanoa on second after a lead off single to right. One two's our count, one down here, bottom of the first. Outside corner strike three as he freezes Berlin on that fastball. Well executed by Danich. Guessing Berlin there was thinking curveball and there was a fastball in the outside corner. All right, Jackson Tessman steps in and he, he's the right fielder. And Tessman had a heck of a game in the first game. He had a first hit of the game, which is a double to left center. Came around and scored a run with two outs on an air. There's a backup throw, and that's going to move Hatano to third and Smoot to second. So Danich, hard to say if that was an uh, errant throw or if it just was a little lack of concentration on arms. Try to do a little back pick to maybe catch. Smoot off of first. So now the force is taken away. We have runners in second and third. Two down with Tessman up. Curveball swung on and fouled away. Tessman, like I said, had a double in the first game to left center. Came around to score with two outs and an errant throw. And then he also had an RBI single, his third at bat. So a, a nice two for four day for Tessman. O1s are count, two down. Fast, or curveball's up. 1-1. One, one. Very well be, could be a game of whoever scores first, and we'll see. Fouled off. one two's the count for Egan. The play's going to be at one on the ground ball. Tano at third, Smoot at second. One twos are count, two down here in the bottom of the first. Fastball swung on, shallow center. But Anderson's got a beat on it, and he makes the play. So, so after the bottom of the first for the Wolfpack, no runs on one hit, no errors. Well, one throwing error, actually and two left on. We'll be back in 30 seconds here for the top of the second inning here at Alamagnet Park. We got a party in the USA, according to Miley Cyrus up there. So we are ready to go here. It's going to be the top of the second. 0-0 zero, zero game here, Al Magnet Park. Section 3-4A championship. Winner moves on to state. Loser sadly goes home. And if you want to go by the who's the hottest right now, Wolfpack have won four games in a row coming through the loser's bracket. So technically they've won four out of five here in the playoffs. Egan won their first three games. Didn't have to play yesterday. Lost the first game to the Wolfpack, 
Charlie Harms, first baseman, senior, steps in. Pitch by Jansky, low for a ball. Charlie was 0 for 3, but he did actually 0 for 2, but he reached on an air in the first game. Fastball in by Jansky. Jansky had a quick first inning. Went strike out, fly out to center, fly out to center. Jansky a junior. Let me give you some stats here in a second. There's a strike. Two ones to count. All right, Jansky on the season, at least through these stats. Two and oh, nine and a third. Here's a two one pitch. In there for a strike, off speed, change up. Nine strikeouts to six walks. So it looks like mainly more on the reliever side. Um, pitched four games, at least according to these stats, Jansky has. There's a big swing by Harms as he follows it off. Two twos are counting here. Top of the second, Al Magnet Park. The all important championship game two. Harm sits in, big swing, and he's gonna hit a base hit to right. So an early hit for the Wildcats as it took him a while last game to get that first hit. I think it took him until about the third inning, actually. So Harms gets a base hit to right on a grounder that gets past Fladham. I'll bring up the designated hitter, Griffin Fenske, and he's gonna be hitting for the pitcher, Ryan Danich. Fenske, as we mentioned, had the hot bat coming in to today's matchups. Big three-run shot. And then he rips one to left. Has it got the legs? But no, it doesn't. Nice play by Runyon. Sound like it got a little bit towards the top of the bat. Hit it square, but right at Runyon. And Runyon, nice play out and left. So one pitch is all it's needed to retire Fenske as Harm still stays on first after his base hit. Brings up the left fielder, Alex Lockenmeyer. Alex had uh, the first hit of the game last game with a stolen base as well. And then he grounded out to third. Pitch by Jansky's gonna see if it's gonna drop down, but no it's not. Testman has a nice beat on it, makes the play. He takes about six steps in towards his left. So two pitches, two outs. And that's gonna make Coach McGowan happy. As we got a little replay here, we can see Tessman had a nice beat on it and only had to go about six steps in to make that play. So catcher now is gonna be both teams with one hit. Egan with one air and a throwing air and a pickoff attempt. Fastball misses out. But Jansky's being efficient here. I think he's still under about six pitches this inning. I think he only threw two to Harms and Two other pitches were two outs. And fastball just misses up. Not by much though. 2-1, two, two down. Alameda Field, the all-important championship game. Section three, 4A. Eagle Wildcats are the away team. Charlie Stephan hits one to right. And Flatham makes a nice catch over the shoulder. Calls off Tessman. Makes a nice play all by his lonesome. So for Egan in the top of the second, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on. And after one and a half complete, it is 0-0. Zero, zero. I'm gonna read a quick announcement here from the high school league. On one camera, we got Greg Borman. On the other camera, we got Joe Chupik. The engineer in the truck is Dalton Gruber. And the producer in the truck is Josh Sibley. We're, we'll just keep it here. Maybe we'll have a little music in the background. That's fine. Yes, and a reminder that if you are looking for the Saints game that is coming up at 7, Channel 15 is where you want to look. The Saints game at 7 o'clock. I think Kenta Maeda is pitching today for the Saints. And you might get a little Buxton action out in center field too. So if you want to tune back and forth between Saints and Egan and, and Park Cottage Grove and Egan and Saints, it's Channel 15. So that'll be coming up at 7 o'clock as we had to move that because of uh, the second game here at Alameda. So Saints game, 7 o'clock, Channel 15. All right, Danish is done throwing his warm-up pitches. 
And now we are ready to go. We got the catcher coming up, Jackson Widener. I think he had the momentum blaster in that first game when he hit that big solo shot in the third inning, and uh, that doubled up the score from one nothing to two nothing. And it just seemed as at, at that moment uh, that the Wolfpack just didn't look back and uh, just had a little bit better, stronger at bats. Played solid uh, D and, and messed the mocker through a heck of a game. So we'll see what Widener here does against Danich. First pitch, curveball low. Widener, as I mentioned, had the big big solo blast out to uh, left center field, but I don't know, about halfway up that tree line. He also uh, reached first. Uh, excuse me, popped up to first. So he was one for four that first game. One holds the count, there's a curveball that misses by Danich. Interesting to see, keep an eye on that bullpen. See how long Danich goes, as well as uh, for, for the Wolfpack, how long Jansky goes. Both these guys are relievers, so we'll see how much they get stretched out. Fastball misses. Three O's the count to Widener. Widener gonna be playing some ball next year at Northern State in the NSIC out in South Dakota. And he walks him on four straight, four straight balls. <coughs> That'll bring up the designated hitter, Tucker Novotny. Uh, Tucker had a single and had he scored on a scored later. Actually, he didn't score, but a pinch runner scored for him previously. And now we're going to have a pinch runner for the catcher, and that'll be number 11, Blake Johnson. Actually, Blake Johnson was the one that came around and scored for Novotny when they scored, uh, I believe it was two runs in the fifth or sixth inning to make it five nothing. Alrighty, so nobody out. We'll see if they send Johnson or uh, maybe even put some motion. I doubt they're gonna be bunting on Novotny as he takes first pitch and fouls it off. Novotny going to the University of Minnesota to be Golden Gopher. Uh, as I mentioned previously, 31 RBIs, two home runs on the season. So when he's not pitching, he's uh, doing damage at the plate is Novotny. Throw over from Danich to Harms to keep an eye on Johnson. Pinch running for the catcher, Widener. 0-1's a count, bottom of the second. No score here at Alamagna Park as we see another throw over. Oh one to Novotny as he fouled off that first fastball. Curveball by Danich, flipped out to center, right at Anderson, and George makes the play. So, two pitches, retire Novotny on that fly out to center. And that's gonna bring up Micah Runyon. So Micah playing left field for Jansky, as Jansky came in now to pitch here in the second game. Blake Johnson at first base running for the catcher Jackson Widener who uh, reached first on four straight balls. Curveball, outside corner in there for a strike. One down here, bottom of the second. Alamagna Park, section three, four A. Championship game. Winner advances the state, loser, season's over. Throw over again to Johnson back in time. Let's go Mike, you Can't say that that uh, Storm that was supposed to happen has really cooled down much, but we, do, we did get a little bit of a breeze. I'm guessing it's still high 80s right now. Curveball in there again for a strike. So Danich now getting that dirty deuce to start dancing. And I'm interested to see if Coach McGowan maybe gets uh, Johnson in motion, whether it's a hit and run or a straight steal. Maybe get uh, Egan's defense moving one way or the other. 0-2, one out, fouled straight back. Running right on that fastball. As the center fielder, Ben Johnson, the number nine hitter, is on deck. Big curveball fouled away. Hot shot. <laughs> Got some tight quarters here at Alamagna. I think the fans should be wearing helmets just as much as the players. Should be wearing my elbow guard today. Here we go, Danish throws over again to Johnson, gets back in time. One down, bottom of the second. Park Cottage Grove, the home team, by winning the all-important 
coin toss. Johnson running for Widener, who reached on a four pitch walk. There's a rip to center. Anderson once again has got a beat on it, makes the cut. Thought that one had a little bit more stink on it, but it hung up a little bit with no wind yet. So Runyon, good at bat though, after going down 0-2 quickly, fouled off three pitches, two pitches, excuse me, and the fly out to George Anderson, the center fielder. Now that brings up the Wolfpack center fielder, number 10, Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson in the uh, first game was 0 for 2 with a sacrifice fly RBI to right field. That started the scoring of their uh, two run inning. And then they scored that second round on a pass ball. Danis once again throws over to first to Harms, keeping an eye on Blake Johnson, the runner. Two outs, bottom of the second. Here's his throws over again. Good thing that those throwovers don't count as pitches for the high schoolers on the pitch count. Try to get you some uh, Danich stats here in a second, if I can find them. And Johnson actually gets off running. Nice throw by Stefan, and in time! In time on a bang, bang play! So they, so Coach McGowan sends the pinch runner, and we're gonna take a peek at it. He'll be blind to it, but a quick release by Stefan, and a nice tag by Amon. So for Park Cottage Grove in the bottom of the second, no runs on no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And after two complete, we have a 0-0 score. We'll be back in 30 seconds for the top of the third inning here in the Section 3-4A championship game. Alrighty, we're back as we have the sophomore right fielder, David Rockford, gets the big time start here in game two out in right field. First pitch is in there for a strike. So Jansky hits the knees on Rockford for strike one. Rockford did pinch hit and then played right field and he flew out to shortstop. Rockford rips one to center. <coughs> Johnson once again has a beat on it. Goes back about eight steps and makes the play. So Egan trying their best to burn Johnson in center, but just not happening here early on. All right, so George, they call him, the kids call him Geo. George Anderson now is going to be batting for himself as he was getting, he was a designated hit for by Griffin Fenske in the first game. First pitch in there for a strike by Jansky. Jansky doing a nice job of working the count and keeping it low. There's a drag bunt right back to Jan Jansky and he makes the play to Smoot. So not a bad idea by Anderson to try to get something moving early, but the old one three as he wasn't able to get it down the third baseline. It'll bring up Liam Martin, the shortstop. Struck out his first at bat. Top of the third. Both teams, one hit. Egan, one air. 0-0 zero, zero is our score. Jansky throwing a nice game here early on. Fastball up and misses. Almost nicked Martin. Liam reached twice last game, had a walk, and he got on an on a air by Hatano, the shortstop, but then he was picked off at first. Fastball misses. 2-0 and oh is a count. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Liam Martin on Monday set the school single season strikeout record. Only a junior, and he is uh, headed to California, Santa Barbara. 
but he's got another year of eligibility. Jansky 2-0 to Martin. Fastball outside corner in there for a strike. Two ones are count, two down. Ball misses, three one. Top of the third. Egan is the away team, the number two seed. Wolfpack of Park Cottage Grove, the three seed, they're the home team. Swung on and missed. Three two now is our count. As you mentioned earlier, Martin, 10 stolen base on the season. At least 12 RBIs through 21 games, hitting about 320. Falled off. Couple doubles, 22 runs. So he finds himself on base, and when he does, good things tend to happen. Uh, leads the team in runs by seven over Lockenmeyer. Three two, two down. Jansky to Martin. Base hit to left. He takes that fastball and deposits it out to left field for the second end of the game for Egan. That'll bring up the second baseman, Mason Amon. Mason Amon trying his best to burn Johnson in center as he's had three flyouts to center. I think his dad, Pete, would be saying that got to find a gap here. Interesting to see if we get Martin in motion. Like I mentioned, he was picked off that first game by Mestabacher. But Martin does have uh, nine plus strikeout or nine plus stolen bases on the season. Ball low inside. As I mentioned, the stats I have for Egan is only through 21 games. We're missing the last two or three games. For the Wolfpack, the stats that I have are only a few games on the hitting side, but they do uh, have their the pitching stats were up to date. Ball misses up and out, 2-0. Two down, Alabama Park. Section 3, 4 eight, championship game. Wolfpack won the first game, 5 nothing. They out hit, they out hit the Wildcats 7 to 2. And Widener had the big blast in that solo shot in the third. 2 0 is the count, wins picking up a little bit. Jansky's pitch, fastball up and misses, 3 0. Even though he's a reliever, maybe it's uh, just a little uncomfortable on pitching from the stretch as it was from the windup. 3 0 pitch in there for a strike right down the middle. Now I'll be interested to see if Martin gets moving, whether it's a hit and run or a straight steal. Amon does a nice job with good control of his bat. Not a big overswinger. There goes Martin. Swung on. Hatano's gonna have to make a play. Fields it, and a nice throw. Nice play by Hatano. So Hatano was getting ready to cover second on the steal by Martin. Comes back, gets rid of it quickly to Smoot to put away Amon in the third, as we're gonna see the quick replay here. Nice job by Hatano stopping, quick field, and then a quick, strong throw over to Smoot. So for Egan in the top of the third, no runs on one hit. No errors and one left on. After two and a half complete, we have a 0-0 score. Got some updates for you coming up. A reminder for the Saints fans, tune, out, tune in to channel 15 for the Saints game. And then also you can subscribe to ETV on YouTube. It is youtube.com backslash Egan television youtube.com backslash egan television or you can just search egan tv or egan television but youtube.com backslash egan television and also if you're enjoying etv make sure to follow them on twitter facebook and subscribe on youtube like we just said you can visit egan's website egan tv's website at egan-tv.com egan-tv.com all right well Yes, and the reminder once again that the Saints game, seven o'clock start, so very well could just have started, is on channel 15. Kenta Maeda on the mound. Byron Buxton in center. But you want to stay here and watch these guys, but you can always pop in on channel 15 for that Saints game. Okay, so now Johnson's back up because the pinch runner, Blake Johnson, was thrown out. 
So this is the center fielder, Ben Johnson. So he saw one or two pitches from Danich before uh, Blake Johnson was thrown out. Fastball misses high. Uh, for Ben Johnson, the first game, he did it, like I said, he had the RBI sacrifice out to right. Otherwise, he had a ground out to third and a strikeout in the first game. Danich is 1-0 here in the 2-0 in the bottom of the third. Gonna collect himself here a little bit. Still sunny out. A little bit of breeze at times, like I said, coming in from right center. There's a curveball. Foul back somewhere. 2-1. Johnson, shortstop, the leadoff hitter, Atano on deck. Fastball in there for a strike. 2-2. Two -two. Once again, Egan's playing Johnson pretty well straight up, outfield and infield. 2-2's pitch, outside corner, strike three. So Johnson looks at strike three from Danich, and that's gonna bring up the shortstop, Josh Hatano. Hatano with a single and a stolen base in the first inning. His fifth stolen base on the season, hitting 378, as we've said. Coming into today, two home runs, 28 RBIs. One down here, bottom of the third, the all-important game two of the Section 3 4A championship. Fastball outside corner just misses low. Wind's picking up a little bit, like I said, coming in from right center going kind of cross, so right center to left center. So some of those hot shots to center are getting kind of hung up and then we're seeing Johnson and Anderson for both teams running them down. Fastball misses. I don't know if we're 1-1 or if we're 2-0 here because I thought the first pitch was a strike. One down. Leadoff hitter Atano up. Swung on to right. Rockford got a beat on it, makes the play. And the crowd loves it when Rockford makes plays. That's what I'm noticing from the Egan fans as the tunnel flies out to right. All right, pitcher Sam Jansky comes in. He uh, popped up to second, his first time up. Had a double, a single, and a run. He went two for three in that first game. Jansky, four stolen bases and 439 average coming in. Curveball misses on the outside corner. Two down, bottom of the third. Casey Lux here on Egan TV at Alamagna Park. And we might, we cross our fingers that we dodge any type of a rainstorm. As we see a shot to right center by Jansky. Rockford's gonna cut it off, but it bounces past him. Jansky's gonna stand up with a double. So Jansky's second double of the day. Getting that slugging percentage up. And I think once again, we're gonna have a pinch runner for the pitcher. And that this time it'll be number 14, Noah Jansky. Courtesy running for the pitcher, number 14, Noah Jansky. High school coach is always taking advantage of that courtesy runner. Pitchers and catchers. Keeping them fresh. That way they get back on the field, they're not trying to catch their breath, and throw four straight balls and walk a guy. All right, now we got Number 17, the first baseman, Will Smoots up. He had a walk his first time, a four-pitch walk. He was uh, 0 for 3 the first game with a hit by pitch. Number three hitter. Two down, curveball, misses, outside. Two down. Noah Jansky running for Sam Jansky as he had a, a double to right field. Curveball, there for a strike, outside corner, 1-1. One, one. Sam Jan uh, Rockford did a nice job at a good beat on it to cut it off, but it just took a little errant bounce on him at the last second, got past him, which allowed uh, Jansky to motor in to second. 1-1's one, a count, two down. Curveball, inside, strike two. 1-2's a count, two down. Bottom of the third. 
Play will be at one here for Egan on the ground. Infield, outfield playing Smoot straight up. The big pitch, swung on, checked, tagged. Checked, tagged, out. Okay, little confusion, but the third out. Little interesting that the uh, home plate up is making all the check calls tonight. So after the uh, bottom of the third for the Wolfpack, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on. We're gonna check out this replay here. Oh, we got a good angle for it too. Uh, that's tough. It looked like he might have might have broke his wrist, but that's a tough one. That's a tough call. But interesting to see what uh, the call would have been if they would have uh, checked it at first. Artie, uh, so after he said, after the bottom of the third, no runs on one hit, no errors, and one left on. We'll just stay here as we get ready for the top of the fourth. Reminder, if you're looking for the Saints game, channel 15, channel 15 for the Saints game. Maeda on the mound, I think, for a little uh, rehab outing. And Buxton, I think, is actually going to be playing some center field. He had a triple last night in the DH spot. But uh, you're probably going to watch better baseball than the Twins, maybe, <laughs> with these two guys, teams playing. But with that being said, uh, we're watching Sam Jansky getting loose here. Hits are even at two apiece. Egan has two errors. And we're going to watch the senior, Lincoln Barry, is going to be coming up to the plate. All righty, so Barry, the first game had a hit and a stolen base. He did hit into a double play in the first inning. It's hard to know what the momentum was, where Wolfpack took the momentum that first game. First pitch is missed out. But with that being said, I don't. a lot of people feel like maybe it was that solo shot by Widener that might have been uh, the momentum boost that the Wolfpack needed that, that pushed the game from 1-0 to 2-0. Off-speed changeup, outside corner for a strike, 1-1. One, one. Barry having a heck of a senior year, as I said, going to Nyack, Northern Iowa area community college, strike two. Barry, uh, after 21 games, so missing a few games here, 364 average, 17 RBIs, 11 walks, three triples, three doubles, 18 runs. I mean, just partridge in a pear tree, a little bit of everything. One two's count. Fastball high, misses. One two two now. Been really impressed with Barry. Uh, as a solid third baseman as a sophomore. Obviously, they, the kids didn't play last year, but seen some big improvement. Ooh, fastball just misses up. 3-2. Good pitch by Jansky, just misses. 3-2, leadoff hitter. Top of the four, Lincoln Berry, the senior. Pitch by Jansky, swung on. Hit to right. Tessman's got a bead, he's got to come in on it, makes a play. So Tessman helps retire Barry on that fly ball to right. Bring up Charlie Harms, the first baseman. Charlie with a single in the lead off the second inning. Charlie was 0 for 3 the first game. As we mentioned, Charlie through 21 games was hitting 415. 15 RBIs, 16 walks, first pitch is misses low. A double, 13 runs. And as I mentioned, I think before he got hurt in that non-conference game against Grand Rapids, I think he was something on about 11 for 11 in either his last three games or in the first three games of the season. 2-0 is a count. Jansky just missing a few here. Fastball in there for a strike. Outside corner to Harms. 2-1, one, one down. Top of the fourth, Alamagna Park on Egan TV, Casey Lux. Section 3-4A championship game. Pitched by Jansky, swung on, fouled away. 2-2 two, two now is our count. You can feel the tension. You can definitely tell that this could be the game of whoever scores first and maybe he's able to, t to tack on an insurance run. Tight game, swung on, fouled away again. Oh, 
Two twos to count. Sam Jansky's on the mound. Jackson Widener is his catcher. Swung on, fouled again. Harms having a good at bat here against Jansky. Seeing all of his pitches. Jansky wanting to work that outside corner. Widener setting up low. In the dirt, 3-2, one down. Charlie Harms batting with the designated hitter, Griffin Fenske on deck. Charlie's got a little choke up action too here with two strikes, like to see it. Swung on, hit over to Smoot. Smoot fields it cleanly, retires Harms himself. So good at bat by Harms. But Jansky wins the battle with the slow roller to Smoot at first. That's gonna bring up the designated hitter, Griffin Fenske. He's hitting for the pitcher, Ryan Danich. Fenske flew out to left, actually more of a line out. Got the crowd excited, but he didn't square it up. Hit it straight at Runyon. Fastball in there for a strike in the outside corner. Runyon playing him pretty much on the line. Johnson shaded a little bit over towards left center. Tessman kind of in his normal spot and right. Fastball again outside corner for a strike. So Jansky's found a good spot here to attack Fenske. Probably a waste pitcher and some off seed here. See if he can get Fenske to chase. And he does. Curveball, low and out to strike out Fenske. So for the Wildcats, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on as Jansky cruises through that inning. We're going to be back here in 30 seconds for the bottom of the fourth inning. It's 0-0 here at El Magna Park, Section 3-4A championship game. So here we go, bottom of the fourth. Clayton Berlin, the third baseman, going to Hamlin next year. Berlin struck out his first time up and was uh, 0 for 3, but reached on an air and, and a walk the first game. Ryan Danich, senior on the mound. First pitch swung on, fouled back somewhere. Tight quarters here at Al Magnet. Head on a swivel, 0-1's our count. Bottom of the fourth, curveball, strike two, outside corner. So Dan is starting to get a little bit better feel for that curveball. Throwing it a little bit more early and often here, especially to the uh, two through five hitters of the Wolfpack. Curveball, misses in. One, two. Curveball in there, just misses high. Not by much, that was tight, that was tight. I think both coaches would want that pitch. 2-2, two -two. bottom of the fourth. Wolfpack are the home team after winning the coin toss. Egan, the away team. Swung on, hit hard to center. Anderson's got a bead though and he makes the play. Seems like when both teams get decent wood to centers, that's when the wind's picked up enough just to kind of hold that ball down. So now it's gonna bring up the right fielder, Jackson Tessman. As I mentioned, Tessman had a nice game the first game. Flew out to right though, his first at bat, 
had a uh, double, scored a run, and then an RBI single. So he was two for four in that first game. First pitch, swings on, fouls it away. One down here, bottom of the fourth. As I mentioned earlier, the Wildcats beat Burnsville 8-1 to one on Memorial Day, beat Park 15-0 last Wednesday. There's a ground ball hit at Liam. Big hop, relay over to Harms in time. That's why they teach the kids to stay down. Took a big hop at the end, I think it hit that lip. So Egan, like I said though, won last Wednesday against, uh, last Wednesday against Park, 15 to nothing, put up 15 hits. Then they beat Rosemont, the number one seed, nine to five. That put them in the spot of the championship game. Park, though, is the hot team. They uh, beat Hastings 12-0, lost to Egan last Wednesday, then beat Eastview on Friday 5-1, as we watched Jackson Widener in their first pitch as a, as a ball. Uh, beat Eastview 5-1 on, Wednesday, on Friday. Beat Lakeville North 12-4 on Monday. Then they beat Rosemont 9-8 yesterday, and then they won the first game today 5-0 against Egan. 1-0 is the count, Widener, big cut. Pops it up. It's going to be between Amon and Rockford. Looks like Amon's going to make the play, and he does. So they retire Widener, and it was a quick one, two, three. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Going into the top of the fifth, we got a 0 0 game. Two, both teams with two hits. Section three, four, eight championship. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Welcome back, Alamagna Park. 0-0 score. Both teams two hits, Egan with two errors. Sam Jansky is doing a nice job here on the mound. Played left field last game. Ryan Danich, his counterpart, do a nice job on the mound for Egan. That's gonna bring up the left fielder, number eight, Alex Lockenmeyer. Lockenmeyer flew out to left field his first time up, had a single and a stolen base in the first game. As I mentioned, Lockmere does have speed as he has four stolen bases on the season or at least through 21 games, about 270 average, 15 runs. So when he gets on base, good things tend to happen for Lockmere. He's gonna show a little bunt, strike in on the knees. So just maybe getting a little reaction, maybe getting uh, Burling to play closer in on third base. Fastball low as Widener attempts to frame that in for a strike, but too low. One ones are count here, top of the fifth. Game's cruising along. Pitch from Jansky, low again. Ball two. As I mentioned, Lockemeyer, 15 runs on the season. So when he gets on base, Tends to mean either they put him in motion or he comes around to score. Two ones are count. Jansky's on the mound. Widener is the catcher. Lockemeyer the hitter. Here's the pitch. Swung on, ripped to left. So Lockemeyer gets a base hit out to left field and we'll see if they put him in motion or potentially even bunt, bunt him over with Charlie Steffen, the catcher, number seven. See what Coach Butler has up his sleeves here. Probably could tell you what the signs are just from knowing the guy from college, but I won't give away any secrets here. 
All right, nobody down. Lockemeyer leadoff single. Quick throw over by Jansky, quicker than we thought. Wow. Quick move by Jansky. Smoot fires it back at him. All right, Stefan. Some call him Chuck, we call him Charlie. Mom calls him Charlie. Flew out to the second baseman. First at bat. Lockemeyer now with a little safer lead. Fastball in for a strike on the outside corner. A little delay there. As you mentioned, the same lineup for Park. You just have Jansky moving from left to pitch, and Micah Runyon, nice job by Smoot to smother that ball. And then Micah Runyon moves out to left for Jansky. Zach Flatham going to the St. John's, playing second. Will Smoot at first. Josh Atano Jr. at short. Whoa, there's a high <laughs> pitch. That Stefan, I think all he could do is try to keep the bat up to keep it away from his face. So 0-2. Just a tough, that's a tough one. He pulls the bat down and might be getting hit. Oh. It's a hard one to figure out right there. You think on 0-1 you're gonna get a little bit better pitch there than that, than a fastball high and in. 0-2's the count, nobody down. Lockemeyer with the leadoff single here in the top of the fifth. Fastball out, 1-2. Good waste pitch by Jansky. Jansky for the most part has been around the mound. I think he's only had about two or three, three pitch, or three ball at bats. Has not walked anybody. Mainly fastball over, over off speed. There's another fastball that misses out. 2-2, two -two. Lockemeyer at first. Lead off single out to left. Foul back by Stefan. Stays alive. Stefan hitting about 220. At least the first 21 games, two stolen bases, nine RBIs. Another throw over to first. Seven runs. Did have that all important solo home run against Shakopee. Gem of a game by Daniel Biancamano. And Stefan won it with the home run. There's a swing and a miss. A change up as Jansky retires Stefan. So that's going to bring up the right fielder, the sophomore, David Rockford. Rockford flew out to center, put a decent charge into it, but once again, Johnson can't be beat out there yet for the Wolfpack. Both teams covering a lot of ground with their center fielders. Johnson with the Wolfpack, Anderson with the Wildcats. Lockemeyer at first, Rockford, first pitch swinging. It's going to be foul, but can Runyon get to it? No. 0-1's going to be our count. One down here. Lockemeyer on first. I think this is Rockford's fifth varsity at bat, maybe? Flew out to short the first game. Had a single, his first ever varsity at bat, right up the middle, first pitch swinging. Big swing, off speed low. 0 2 is the count. Interesting to see if we get Lockford in motion here on this 0 2 count. Center fielder George Anderson on deck. Fastball up and out for ball. Ball one, 1 2. Reminder for anyone looking for the Saints game, there is a rain delay right now but it is on channel 15. Saints game, rain delay, channel 15. One twos are count, one down. There goes Lockemeyer, swung on and missed, throw down by Weidman, not in time. So Rockford retired on a strikeout, but Lockemeyer does steal second. So Egan now has Lockemeyer, yeah, Lockemeyer in scoring position. Looks like Coach Butler is gonna go to the bench here for George Anderson, and we're going to bring in Matt Haig. More than likely, this is a pinch hit with Anderson re-entering. 
and staying in center field. Alrighty, Haig, who spent some time, whether it be in the outfield or at DH this year. Couple stolen bases, four RBIs, five walks, seven runs. Put some good swings throughout the season. Important for Lockmeyer to get a good, not only a good lead, but a good secondary because uh, any type of base hit, I'm guessing Coach Butler is gonna be trying to wave him in, put the pressure on the Wolfpack to make the play. Two down here, top of the fifth. Egan with three hits, Wolfpack with two hits, Egan with two errors, but no score as Jansky and Danich are throwing a wonderful game. Ball is low. So we see Widener go out and talk to Jansky, figure out the strategy here for Haig. Infield and outfield playing Haig pretty much straight up. Tano playing almost even with the base. So he can come up and charge with any ground ball. Swung on a fall down the line. 1-1. One, one. Two down. Top of the fifth. Alameda Park on Egan TV. Casey Lux. Section 3-4A championship game. Game two. The Wolfpack won the first game 5-0. Out hit. The Wildcats seven to two. The big blast was a solo shot by the catcher Widener. Ball in the dirt. Can get past Widener. Wanted to throw it, but Lockemeyer's gonna get over to third. So now, an air, base hit, pass ball can bring in Lock. Jansky's done a nice job though of keeping the hitters off balance all game, mainly in fastballs. Some off speed, but mainly fastballs, just working the corners. Mixing in a couple uh, high strikes to see if we can get some guys to chase. And then painting that outside corner. 2-1 pitch. Fastball down the middle to Haig. Big pitch. 2-2, two, two, two down. Sam Jansky on the mound. Junior. Here's a 2-2 two, two pitch, high. Ball three. The leadoff hitter, the shortstop, Leon Martin on deck. Three, two, two down. Jansky's pitch, fastball. Down the line for a hit. That's gonna score Lockemeyer. Hayes gonna round and stay at one. A big pinch hit, RBI single by Hay as he battles that count to 3-2 and gets it past the diving Berlin. Nice job by Runyon of getting down there quickly to keep Haig at first. I'm gonna see the replay. Right past Lockenmeyer, right past Berlin. Ball was hit pretty hard, but Runyon did an excellent job of getting there and throwing it in the second to keep Haig only at first. So after Haig's RBI single, they're gonna re-enter George Anderson at first, who also is a threat to steal. Anderson on the year, couple stolen bases himself. I believe George is a sophomore as well, or a junior. All right, now we're gonna have the leadoff hitter, the shortstop, Liam Martin, had a single his last at bat, reached twice the first game with a walk and reached on an air, but was picked off at first. Liam, like I said, only a junior, but already set to go to California, Santa Barbara. There goes Anderson, and he's in there with a stolen base, and he's gonna try to round for third. And he's gonna be up for three. So one pitch and Anderson is gone as he gets a stolen base. So Egan now starting to play a little bit of their baseball, trying to put people in motion, put the pressure on the Wolfpack or on their opponent. And now you got Martin up at the plate. Excellent back control with Anderson sitting at third. First pitch looked to be a ball. Jansky's pitch to Martin. Fastball in there for a strike. 
Comes right back with a strike right down the middle. Nice job by Jansky. One ones are count, two down. Top of the fifth, Egan leading one nothing on the RBI down the third baseline of the pinch hitter, Matt Haig. Jansky's pitch, Martin flips one down to right, but that's gonna be foul. One, two now the count. George Anderson was pinch hit for by Matt Haig. Haig had the RBI single down the line. Anderson re-entered into back to first. First pitch stole second. Ball got past Atano. And, and Anderson popped up and scooted over to third. One, two's the count, two down. Fat hit hard to Berlin. The relay over to Smoot in time. In time. Nice play by Berlin of standing tall. And Smoot looked like he had almost fight off a little bit of that sun as well. But Egan does get one, so they get one run. On two hits, no errors, and one left on. So after four and a half completes, it is Egan one, the Wolf Pack zero. We got an announcement for you, for anybody looking for some summer work. There we go, Cascade Bay. If you need a fun summer job, Egan's Cascade Bay is hiring. Serve your community, make friends, earn some money, and help create summer fun for everyone. Lifeguards, pool attendants, guest attendants, ground attendants are all some of the positions that are open. For more info on how to apply, you just gotta dive. Just dive into the waters and check out their website at CascadeBay.com. Once again, CascadeBay.com. We'll keep it here. I'm gonna read a little note from the high school league as well. Minnesota State High School League reminds us that the educational value of this event is more important than its outcome. Respect for others, including opponents and officials, is one of those values. Support today's teams with the respect they deserve. So Egan strikes first, and we'll see how if the Wolfpack can answer as that all-important first run. Ryan Dance, the senior, still on the mound. The designated hitter, Tucker Novotny, is going to come up. Novotny, a threat from the plate as well as on the mound. U of M commit. 31 RBIs, two home runs. And like I said, wild stats on the mound. 101 Ks in only 55 innings and a 1.49 ERA. And I think the Golden Gophers are ready to use him right away if need be next year. There's a curve on the outside corner for a strike. 0 ones count. Egan leading 1 0. Egan, the number two seed, lost the first game to the Wolfpack 5 0. The all important win in advance. Fastball ripped to center. Anderson knocks it down for a single. So nice job by Anderson to cut it off so it's not a double. But Novotny goes up, climbs the ladder, and tattoos that one to left center. Novotny's second hit on the day. Left fielder now is going to be Micah Runyon. Runyon flew out to center his first time up. Lead off single by Novotny, here comes the bunt. Attempted and fouled. I wanna get Novotny to second, open things up for Johnson, the number nine hitter, center fielder, and then also maybe try to get to Atano at the top of the lineup. Second offering, bunt, gets down. Danich fields it, gets it over to Harms in time for the first out. So a nice sacrifice bunt by Runyon. Does his job, gets Novotny over to second. Now bring up the center fielder, number 10, Ben Johnson. Johnson had struck out his first at bat. Like I said, the first game he did have a, a sacrifice RBI to right. One down, bottom of the fifth. Section 3, 4A championship game here at Alamagna Park on Egan TV. Winner advances the state. Off speed misses. 1 0. Oh. Pretty positive this is Danich's longest outing in the season, and very well the same for Jansky, as both are relievers by trait. Big swing by Johnson. 1 1's a count, 1 down. But Danich doesn't seem to be tiring, and neither does Jan, uh, Jansky. Both of them haven't lost much speed on their fastball. 
And Danich is still sharp on his curveball. Probably better that the heat went away a little bit for Danich. There's a curveball. Well, excuse me, swing, and Harms is gonna run out of room. That ball just hits the base of the fence, about two steps away. If he would have caught it, there's a good chance Novotny would have tagged for third. But Egan would definitely rather have that out and have Novotny on third. One-two's the count, one down. Center fielder, Ben Johnson at the plate. Egan playing him straight up, outfield and infield. Danich, hit, left center. Big hop to Anderson. Here comes a big relay. Not in time. Novotny rumbles home, scores his run, and they tie it up, one to one. On a big RBI single with two out, or two strikes by Johnson. We're gonna take a little look at it. Novotny is gonna slide to the outside. Amon cut it off, but there was no throw home as he was able to get in. So just like that, the Wolfpack answer, and it's 1-1 here in the bottom of the fifth. Only one out, and now Ben Johnson's sitting on second base. Leadoff hitter Josh Hatano, the shortstop, back up. Had a single with a stolen base his first time up in the first, and he flew out to Rockford in right. So time for uh, Danich to get tough. Big lead by Johnson. Ball in the dirt. Nice job by Stefan keeping it in front. Gotta keep Johnson at second. one is a count, one down. Bottom of the fifth, 1-1 one, one is our score. Section 3-4-A championship game, Alameda Park. Here in Burnsville. We dodge the rain. Spike curveball gets past Stefan. It's gonna put Johnson on third. Now if you're eager, you gotta be ready for either a suicide squeeze and obviously Fly ball to the outfield could potentially bring in the, the uh, lead run. That's going to bring out the pitching coach, Tom Booski. Probably also going to give, I believe that is, Michael Jeleno. Uh, actually, actually, no, it's Tony Marudas. Maybe give him a little bit more time to warm up out in the bullpen. Dance was cruising along. Novotny uh, swung it at a high strike that he pounded out to left center, but Anderson did a good job of, of uh, getting to it and cutting it off and keeping Novotny at first. Runyon got the sacrifice bunt down to move Novotny to second. And then Johnson with the big hit to left center that brought in Novotny. And then that pass ball moved Johnson from second over to third. 2 0 is the count. 1 1 is our score. One out. Bottom of the fifth. Leadoff hitter Josh Hatano, the shortstop, is up. Egan, infield, playing in. Fastball in there for a strike on the outside corner. Tano had a single to right in the first inning then stole second. Two ones to count, one down. Curveball, hit, Amon. Oh wow, wow. Johnson stayed home on the ground ball to second on the slow roller. So Atano is retired on the ground ball to Amon. Egan might have caught a break there. Probably just didn't get a good read off the bat because that thing wasn't hit hard. Amon had to take a step back, 45 degree back. Would have been a tough throw to actually get Johnson at home. That's gonna bring up the pitcher, Sam Jansky. Fakes, fakes the uh, 
Drag bunt for a strike. 0 1, two down. 1 1's our score. Wolfpack answers in the bottom of the fifth. Curveball, hit. Base hit to left. Right past Barry. And Johnson scores. Nice piece of hitting by Jansky. Second hit of the game. He has a double and now an RBI single. And he's doing the work on the mound. So just like that, the Wolfpack not only answer, but take the lead. Now it's two to one, and we're gonna have a pinch runner once again, and it's gonna be Noah Jansky. And that one just got past the diving Barry that brought in Johnson. Two down. Wolfpack taking the lead here on the bottom of the fifth. Dan, it's curveball, misses out. First baseman is Will Smoot now at the plate. Smoot had a walk and a K. And he only reached the first game on a hit by pitch. Curveball, spikes the plate, that's gonna move the pinch runner. Noah Jansky to second, the force is taken away, now the play's gonna be at first on the ground. Two O's, count two down. Bottom of the fifth. Wolfpack scoring two here at the bottom of the fifth. One with one out, and the second run with two outs on the base hit by Jansky, the pitcher. Danch's pitch, missing high, 3-0. As the number four hitter, the third baseman, Clayton Berlin on deck. 3-0, two down. Egan trailing 2-1, Wolfpack leading after getting two here in the bottom of the fifth. Fastball in there for a strike, 3-1. Three ones count, two down. The pinch runner, Noah Jansky, running for the pitcher, Sam Jansky, at second. Curveball, strike two, outside corner. So three straight balls, two straight strikes. Curveball. Stuck his elbow out, up called him out. Stuck his elbow out and the ump called him out. You don't see it called that often, but for the Wolfpack, they get two runs. And we're gonna take a look at this real quick here. He stuck that elbow out. Yeah, he kind of leaned his shoulder into it a little bit. It's a tough call, you don't see it called too often. So for uh, the Wolfpack in the bottom of the fifth, they get two runs on three hits, no errors, and one left on. We'll keep it here again as it's getting, getting nice and tight here. 2 1 score. Jansky's still back on the mound. Wolfpack, though, did answer as Egan scored one in the top of the fifth on the RBI pinch hit by Matt Haig with one out. And then after doing so, the Wolfpack answered it up with those two runs in the bottom of the fifth. Jansky still on the mound. Like I said, he played left field the first game. And this has to be uh, potentially his longest outing in the year too, because at least his stats tell me that he was more, he's mainly a reliever, a late in the reliever similar to Danich. So both teams are forced to use relievers and try to let them go as long as they can before getting to their bullpen. So Mason Amon, the second baseman, is gonna step in. I missed his second at bat, but he flew out to center his first at bat. Amon, second baseman. Batting on the left side, Jansky. 
in there for a strike. Chance Kid Jr. Four thirty-nine at the plate. Four stolen bases. Had the big, the big RBI. And that RBI put the Wolfpack ahead in the bottom of the fifth. One one's the count to Amon. Swung on, hit the first big hop over to Smoot. Relay in time. Nice play by Smoot, staying, staying home on that big hop, and a nice relay over to Jansky covering first. Supposed to be routine. That can be a tricky play. One down now, senior, Lincoln Berry, third baseman, pitched the first game. One down. Jansky misses. Barry does a little bit of everything, as I mentioned. Leads the team in triples with three. So he's got the gap power. Fastball misses low and out. 18 runs through 21 games. 367, 17 RBIs through 21 games. 2 0 the count. Widener's going to go talk to Jansky. Wait to see here if it's more of a mound thing, if Jansky might have a small injury. First we had Widener go out there to talk to him. Now we have Coach McGowan go out there to talk to him. Saw a little bit of uh, muscle and bustle out in the bullpen, at least to get somebody ready. Hard to tell, I don't know if it's a landing spot or something tweaked. So he got a little bit of a grimace after that practice throw. All right, we'll see what we can do here. It's hard to know what happened there. 2 0 the count, one down. Amin was retired on that ground ball to first. Smoot made a nice play. Took a big hop on him. Quick relay over to Jansky. Top of the six, Egan trails, two to one. Senior Lincoln Barry up. Fastball up, ball three. Egan getting to the heart of the lineup here. Three oh pitch by Jansky. In there for a strike inside. Three ones are count, one down. Wolfpack leading 2-1 as they answered Egan's run in the fifth with two in the bottom. Fastball up, ball four. Barry finds his way to first. Charlie Harms comes up. Single in the second. Ground out to first. The second time up. <clears throat> And we have another time. I think it actually might be more of a groin than it is an arm issue. I think Jansky's having a hard time pushing off right now. And that very well is why some of those fastballs are high. Not missing low. So Barry will be on first with a walk. Charlie Harms, the first baseman, will be coming up. Designated hitter Griffin Fenske on deck. Once again, 
Channel 15 if you're looking for the St. Paul Saints game. There was a rain delay, but chan but, <laughs> but we got some good action here. Two ones are scored. Section four, or excuse me, section three, four A championship. Winner advances the state. Wolfpack won four games in a row through the losers bracket. They beat Egan earlier, five to zero. Lincoln Berry at first. Charlie Harms at the dish. One down, fastball in there for a strike. Uh, Barry's had a few stolen bases on the season, five. So interested to see what they do here. Barry has good, or uh, Harms has good control of the back and flip it over all around the field. Fastball in there again for a strike. So Harms looks at two fastballs. 0-2 now is count, one down. Wolf throw over as Barry barely got off the base. Wolfpack out hitting the Wildcats 5 4. Egan, two errors. Wolfpack one. Wolfpack leading 2 to 1. Fastball up. 1 2. After 21 games, Harms was hitting 415, 13 runs. Fastball swung on, popped up. Looks like it's gonna stay in the infield. And Widener makes the play. Surprised that Berlin didn't call him off, but Widener makes the play. Nice job by Widener. Usually don't have your catcher go halfway to third or halfway to first to make a pop-up, but they trust him. He's going Northern State, so he knows what he's doing. Two down now, designated hitter Griffin Fenske. Barry's still at first. Fenske flew out to left. Line out more likely and a strikeout. Two down, two ones are score. Fastball in there for a strike outside corner by Jansky. Jansky getting tough here. Top of the six. Trying to get through the meat of the lineup. Barry with a safe lead, it takes off. Has good jump, strike two. No throw. So now, they sacrifice the strike to get Barry to second. But now it's 0-2 to Fenske. Now he's gotta go to work. A little bit of a shift towards left field. Curveball misses. Johnson has him shaded towards left center. Runyon has him shaded towards the line. Hatano has a little bit of a shade towards the third baseline as well. Base hit up the middle. Barry's got a repeat on it. Johnson doesn't field it cleanly and he'll score a tie it. Big two out hit by Fenske with two strikes. Right back up the box. Jansky threw us something a little too nice. Fenske looks at two strikes down the middle and then hits one right up the middle and Barry scores. Johnson had a good beat on it as you see there and it just took another big, just a late, late hop. It'd been, a, it'd been a tough play. Barry had a good lead at second. But I would have been interested to see if we'd had a play at the plate. So Fenske with an RBI single ties it up. And then now we're gonna have Sam Martin, slugging Sammy Martin they call him, pinch running for Fenske at first. So, pinch runner, Sam Martin. Fenske more than likely will re-enter. Lockemeyer, the left fielder now coming up. Lockemeyer with a single and a stolen base this game, and then a single and a stolen base the first game. Two twos are score, two down. 
Some clutch hitting by both teams with two outs. Fastball in, high. Section 3-4A championship game here, Alamagna Park, Egan TV. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. Throw over again. Coaches want Martin to get dirty. Plenty of laundry detergent to go around. Jansky's pitch popped. Foul, 1-1, one, one, two down. Jansky throwing a heck of a game here. So is Danich. Two twos are score. Both teams, five hits. Egan, two errors. Wolfpack, one error. Fastball, hits, pops the glove, but misses, 2-1. Sam Martin, pinch running for the designated hitter, Griffin Fenske, who had the big 0-2 RBI single up the middle. Lockemeyer, big cut, fouls it off. Fenske hit that base hit straight up the middle. Johnson had a good beat on it as it was right at him, but took a late hop on him. It would have been tough to, tough to throw out Barry, but it, I would like to see what that relay would have looked like. Ground ball to Atano's left. It's going to be a tough play, and he gets the force out. Wow! What a play by Atano. Huge play. The only place he would have went would have been second for the force out, and he's able to get Martin. So Egan, though, does answer back. One run. Ah, let's see here. Getting ahead of myself. One run on one hit. No errors. Nobody left on. After five and a half complete, we got a 2-2 game here. Might be extras. We'll be back in 30 seconds. We're back. Once again, if you're looking for the Saints game, it is on channel 15, but it's still a rain delay. So you might as well stay here with us because this is getting to be good. 2-2, two -two, back and forth action. Nobody can score a run the first four innings. Egan scored one in the fifth on a, uh, I believe it was a one out RBI. And then uh, by Haig, yeah, an RBI by Haig. Okay, first pitch, base hit. To left by Berlin. First pitch by Danich is deposited out to left by Berlin. Berlin with his with his first hit of the day. As we said, Egan scored first in the top of the fifth. Big pinch hit by Matt Haig down the third baseline. Then Wolfpack answered with one out and then scored the go-ahead run with two outs on a big hit by Sam Jansky. And then Egan followed it up. Barry stole second with no throw from Widener. And on an 0-2 count, Fenske had a base hit up the middle that scored Barry, and now we're tied to twos. Berlin, though, leads off first pitch, base hit out to left. We have a pinch runner, which is number 11, Blake Johnson. There's a bunt, and just missed. Didn't get it down, and Barry just missed it. Jackson Tessman, the right fielder. Go, go, go. 
0-1, nobody down. Two twos are score. Wolfpack now with six hits. Egan with five hits. Sun kind of beating right at first base. Another bunt attempt, he offered. 0-2, didn't pull it back. Smart pitch by Danich throwing a high fastball. Tessman though, can control the bat. Was two for four of the first game, RBI single and a double, which he came around to score. So he's playing with a lot of confidence, even though he didn't get the bunt down. 0-2's the count, fouled away. Danich going as deepest of the season here. Into the bottom of the six. Jansky going the deepest into the season, I believe, as well. Pinch runner Blake Johnson at first for Berlin. Fouled away to third. O2s are count. Berlin swung on the first pitch. Base hit out to left. Berlin going to Hamlin, as well as Mestabacher, who threw a gem of a game the first game. Tessman holds off on that off speed. One twos are count. Time to clean some dishes. Nobody out here, bottom of the six. Pinch runners, Johnson for Berlin. Tessman at the plate, Danich's pitch. Fouled hard left. One, two. Egan playing Tessman straight up. Fastball low, two, two. Not a bad waist pitch. Tessman was falling off some of those uh, one, two strut pitches that were a little too tight, a little too close for coach's measure. Blake Johnson, pinch running. Berlin led off the inning with a single to left. Danich's 2-2 pitch, rip to left. Missed by Glockenmeyer on the dive. And they're gonna bring him home. Here's the throw, cut off. I kind of got blocked there. I didn't see Lockemeyer's attempt as Lockemeyer dove on that lace job by Tessman after he didn't get the bunt down. And then Barry cut off the relay from Liam. So we didn't even get a chance to see what the play at the plate would have been. So Wolfpack take the lead now, 3-2. And in doing so, they have Tessman at second with nobody down. Tessman having a day at the plate. Two RBIs on the day, two doubles, scored a run, and currently three for, three for seven. Curveball in the dirt. Three twos are score. A game of answers. One O's are count. Swung on a miss by Widener, the catcher, Jackson Widener. Widener walked his first time up, popped up to second, second time up, but he did have the big solo shot in the first game. This is an absolute missile out to left. One one's a count. Curveball, swung on, missed. Big cut by Widener. Widener going to Jack or er, Northern State next season. Tessman standing on second after the big double down the line, just past the diving Lockenmeyer. One, two, and it hits him. So a one-two pitch puts Widener back on, on first. It does open up 
the force, but it also potentially opens up a bunting situation, which will be interesting to see if Wolfpack actually do bunt Novotny, who's more likely to swing away. Danch is going to get a nice round of applause as he did a heck of a job going the longest he has all season. That's a tough one. So the book isn't closed yet on Danich, but I did have him for three strikeouts and seven hits. And I believe all three runs were earned as the airs were just on uh, pickoff attempts. Wonderful crowd here tonight at Alamagna Park. Got people down the left field line, got people down the right field line, got the stands filled up. Plenty of excitement. Good sportsmanship on both sides. And just really good baseball here in the second game. Just back and forth, back and forth. And that's going to bring in the reliever, Tony Marudas. And I'm going to pull up his stats real quick. Tony, mainly a reliever. Now this one only is only through one game, so I guess that's not the best one to go off of. I know he's pitched more than just that one time out for Tony. So Tony is going to be the first relief for Danich. Just a reminder, I want to thank the crew doing double duty here today from Egan TV. On the, on the cameras, we got Greg Borman, got Joe Chupik. The engineer in the truck is Dalton Gruber, and the producer is Josh Sibley. So we enjoy bringing live action, whether it be the area, whatever events it may be, graduations, concerts, sporting events. And as we said before, the uh, Saints game was still currently in a rain delay, and that is on channel 15 once that does get back up and running. So the designated hitter is going to be Tucker Novotny. He's <coughs> going to the U of M as a pitcher. And Novotny, like I said, scary hitter, 31 RBIs, two home runs. Today, Novotny had a base hit and then did score. If I remember correctly, I believe he scored the tying run in the bottom of the fifth. So Tessman's on second. Widener's on first. Tessman had the big RBI double. That brought in uh, Blake Johnson that was running for Berlin. And Wolfpack are leading 3-2, looking to tack on a few more runs here in the bottom of the six. Fakes the bunt, fastball misses. And it's the chess game. Probably one of the few guys that you would consider would bunt, maybe, for the Wolfpack. And might be the one that's asked to put it down. Harms is playing up. Marudis has got to cover the third baseline. Amon's got to hustle over to first to cover first. Misses the bunt. And he offered. And actually, they're having Barry charge and Harms charge. So Martin's got to go all the way from potentially holding the runner on to cover third. He's young enough, he can do it. Three twos are score. Wolfpack leading. Bottom of the six. One ones are count. Nobody down. Tony Maruda's on the mound. Another bunt attempt. Strike on the outside corner. Oh two now, or excuse me, one two. One, two's the count, designated hitter. Tucker Novotny on, at the plate. Tessman at second, Widener at first. Misses on the outside corner, two, two. Widener was in a one, two at bat and then got plunked by Danich. So it does give him a force out. But they wanted to get Widener out and leave Tessman at second. Swung on, hit shallow. 
Amon, not gonna make the play. Rockford, relay, not in time. Everybody's safe. So Novotny muscles one out to short right. Everybody moves up a base as Rockford tried to get the force out at second. Widener just beat the throw to Martin. All right, that'll bring up the left fielder, Micah Runyon. Bases are loaded now. Egan's gonna have to play their infield up. Three twos are score. Wolfpack out hitting the Wildcats, 8-5. Fastball up, misses. one -oh's are count. Fastball up, 2-0. And now Runyon's right where he wants to be, 2-0 looking for a fastball that he can handle. Fastball again, misses high, 3-0. Three zero to left fielder Micah Runyon. Fastball in there for a strike. Coaches would tell Marudas to throw it in the same spot. Three one. Bottom of the six. Three twos to score. Wolfpack leading. Walked him. So White or Runyon walks, gets an RBI. Wolfpack put Tack on their fourth run, and still nobody out here on the bottom of the six. Brings up the number nine hitter, Ben Johnson, center fielder. He had a uh, big RBI single. To score Novotny to tie it up at 1-1. Swung on and fouled down the line. 0-1's oh, the count. Four twos to score. Wolfpack out hitting the Wildcats, 8-5. Curveball on the corner for a strike. 0-2. Marutas in relief of Danich. Danich completed Five, but didn't get out of the six. Curveball hit him. Brings in another run. Now it's five two, nobody out. Reminder, if you're looking for the St. Saint Paul Saints game, it is on channel 15. It was in a rain delay as of recently, still. 5-2 is our score. Bottom of the six, it's been a game of, like I said, answers. Egan went ahead, one nothing in the top of the fifth. And a one out pinch hit single by Matt Haig down the third baseline. And then Park tied it up with one out and then had a big two out hit to go ahead 2-1. Lincoln Berry walked, stole second with two outs and then Griffin Fenske, the designated hitter on a 0-2 count, had a base hit up the middle to tie it at twos. And then now Park has answered with three in the bottom of the six and there's still nobody down. So Marudas is gonna be pitching to the leadoff hitter, Josh Atano. First pitch in there for a strike. Atano has a single with a stolen base, flew out to right, grounded out to second. They're making some nice plays at short today. 0-1 oh, pitch, low. Novotny on third. Runyon on second, 
Center fielder Johnson on first, nobody down. Bottom of the six, curveball in there for a strike. One, two. And this is where uh, Marutis had Johnson last in, last at bat, one, two, and then he plunked him with the inside curveball. Five twos are score, section three, four, a championship. Swung on, crushed, foul. A little too good of a one-two pitch, some would say. Leadoff hitter, Atano, one-two, swung on, missed, struck him out. So now double play can get you out of the inning. It does bring up Jansky, who had an RBI single in his last at-bat. It's been a nice job on the mound. More than likely his longest outing of the day is, or of the year as well. Actually had a, has a double too. Two doubles today. Curveball misses. Jansky's showing you why he has a 439 average. He is four for six on the day. Two doubles, two singles, RBI and scored a run. Fastball side corner in there for a strike. One, one, one down. Novotny on third. He reached with a single. Just the one that he kind of had a muscle off that just got past Amon in shallow right field. Runyon on second. Curveball blocked by Stefan. 2 1. Runyon reached base on a walk. And then the center fielder, Ben Johnson, reached on a 1 2. Bean ball. Two ones to count, one down. Wolfpack, 5 2 lead. Inside fastball, fall away down the line. 2 2 to Jansky. Jansky and Atano are juniors. Two twos to count, one down. Bottom of the sixth. Wolfpack have already put up three. Fastball misses outside. All started with Berlin. First pitch, single to left. Three twos count. One down. Big pitch here by Marudas. Hit to left. Over Lachenmeyer's head, that's gonna score a couple. Novotny scores. Runyon scores. And Johnson scores. A big one out, three two double by Jansky. He's just having a day. Four RBIs on the day, a three run double by Jansky out to left field that got up and over Lockemeyer and left. And just, just like that, it's an eight two game. See the pitch, 3-2 pitch. Got up and over, yeah, Lockemeyer thought it was gonna be a little bit closer that he might be able to jump up and grab it. And both runners had a, had a nice beat on it as Runyon was almost caught up by Johnson when Johnson scored. So now it's an 8-2 game as they blew this inning open here with six runs. And then now it's gonna bring in number 30, Trevor Langenberg. And Trevor. Calm down. Could use a little sportsmanship, but that's all right. So Trevor Langenberg's gonna come in now for Egan. We got some fans going a little wild here. He's yelling at coaches. I don't know why that needs to happen, but it does. Apparently now everybody just yells at everybody. 
There was good sportsmanship early. Okay, so Langenberg's gonna come in. There's one down. Bases have been cleared on that double by Jansky. As I mentioned, Jansky's having a heck of a day. Three for four on the day. To d three for four this game, as well as pitching a gem. Two doubles, a single, four RBIs. Got our first warning of the day. Got high schoolers yelling at coaches. I don't know what's going on. Anyways, moving on. It's gonna bring up number 17, Will Smoot, the first baseman. Smoot, walk and two Ks. All right, Langenberg in to try to close out this inning. Get Egan's bats up. Wolfpack now out hitting the Wildcats, 9-5. Leading 8-2. First pitch in there for a strike. Oh one, one one down. Swung on. High bouncer to Martin. Martin, throw in time to Harms, holds on. That moves the pinch runner. Can't see who's pinch running over there. But with that being said, that brings up the third baseman. So Berlin led off the inning with a single on the first pitch. So now they've batted around. Two down, 8-2 lead for the Wolfpack. Nice stop by Stefan. Pinch runner is number 14, Noah Jansky for Sam Jansky after he hit that bases clearing double. Two hot shots out to left this inning. Grounder gets through Barry and Martin. That's going to score Jansky to make it 9-2. On a nice piece of hitting by Berlin, he gets two hits in one inning. And an RBI. Take a look at it here. Gets his hands through. Just bounces one right between Barry and Martin. More than likely would have been Barry's play if he could have got to it. Martin would have had a long throw to get Berlin. Two down. That brings up the right fielder, Jackson Tessman, who had a RBI double earlier this inning. Fastball misses low, one one's our count. Two down, nine two's our score. Park won the first game, five nothing. Took the lead in the bottom of the fifth, two one. Egan tied it up two two and then Park exploded in the bottom of the six for seven. Fastball misses in the outside corner, 2-1. Two down. Fastball low, 3-1. Bottom of the six, section 3-4-A championship game. As we mentioned, Wolfpack, the hot team. Swung on, popped up. Shortstop Martin makes the play to end the inning. So seven runs on five hits, no errors, and one left on as they retire Testament. We'll keep it here as we're gonna be rolling into the top of the seven. They're gonna need a big comeback from Egan. We'll see if uh, Jansky still goes out to close this one out. More than likely he will. And it looks like he will be. As he's gonna try to go for the complete game win while having a four RBI day. Three for four at the dish. Only giving up five hits on the mound. Just a wonderful showing by the junior. Egan 
see if they're going to be sending up their uh, any pinch hitters or not. We're going to have Charlie Stephan, the catcher, leading off here in the top of the seventh. Dragonflies are out too now. Perfect. A little live looking at the Saints. There we go. Looks like they're starting back up. And Buxton isn't in the lineup today. Interesting. Maybe he got sent over to the big league squad right away. All righty, so Jansky after a long uh, layoff in the dugout, but he also contributed with that bases clearing double. He's gonna try to uh, get these last three outs and send the Wolfpack to the state tournament. In the, uh, as I mentioned, they beat Hastings 12-0, the sixth seed. Then they lost to Egan 15 to nothing. Then they beat Eastview 5 to 1 on Friday, the 4th. Beat Lakeville North 12 4 on Monday. Beat Rosemont 9 8 yesterday. And then one earlier today, 5 0. Strike in there for Jansky. Beat Egan 5 0 earlier today. So they've won uh, four in a row coming into this game. Big swing by Stefan, 0-2 now. Stefan flew out to, sec to second and struck out here today. 0-2 pitch, fastball outside. Nine twos our score. Top of the seventh, Al Magna Park, Egan TV. Swung on and missed, tagged and out for the big first out of the inning. We've got Jansky for five strikeouts so far. David Rockford will come up, fly out to center and a strikeout. Sophomore, playing right field today. The second game. Fastball misses. So no score through four. Egan scores in the top of the fifth, one. Park answers with two in the bottom of the fifth. Swung on, hit a hot shot. Nice play by Flatham. Throws it over to Smoot. 4-3. Egan scored one in the sixth to tie it back up with two outs and two strikes. And then Park exploded with seven in the bottom of the six. And a few big hits in that inning, but the big one was the bases clearing double, three RBIs by the, by the pitcher. Would be my player of the game, Sam Jansky. Sam Shackford's gonna get a, Shackman, excuse me, Sam Shackman's gonna get a pinch hit here. He's gonna bat for George Anderson. Jackman uh, only had one plate appearance in the first game, playing right field. He's going to Hamlin as well. Be teammates with Berlin and Mestemacher. First one misses low, ball one. Fastball low, outside corner, strike one. One and one, two down. One ones are count. Swung on and crushed by Shackman. That one's gone. That's a Wildcat Jack. That's a big bomb. Two down, but Shackman potentially last that bad of his high school career. Hits a bomb to left. Pitch got up, and he took it deep. Nice moment for Sam. Might not enjoy it as much as he wants to as we watch that. He's able to get the trot early. That thing was popped to left. Wildcat Jack right there. All right, Liam Martin shortstop leads off. 9-3 now is our score. Two down. Fastball outside corner again, strike. 
Jansky just pounding that low outside strike, especially to righties. There was a minute there where it looked like he might be taking himself out of the game. I don't know if it was a growing or something. Fastball low, one one's a count, two down. <laughs> one one, two down. Section three, four A championship. High fastball. Wolfpack out hitting the Wildcats 10-6. Fastball again, high misses. 3-1. The ever elusive last out. Especially when you can just taste it. 3-1, two down. Top of the seventh. Fastball outside corner again, strike. 3-2, two. two down. Widener unable to hang on to it. Foul tip back. 3-2 count, two down to the shortstop, Martin. Struck out in a single today. He might have missed his third at bat. Pitch from Jansky. Fouled. Three two, two down, nine three, Wolfpack leading. Wolfpack won the first game five to nothing. Big blast from Jackson Widener to make it two nothing. Solo shot. Walked him. Brings up the second baseman, Mason Amon. Nine threes are scored, two down. Saints game is back up and running. Channel 15. As Jansky's gonna get a well-deserved round of applause. Goes six and two thirds. Three earned runs. Three for four at the dish. Four RBIs. Looks like they're gonna bring in Mestemacher to finish it out. Try to get that last out. Mestemacher threw a complete game shutout in game one. Wildcats won that one five to zero. So Connor's going to Hamlin along with Berlin and Shatman. And the first game he had, he only gave up two hits, four strikeouts, one walk. So very efficient outing by Mestemacher. And then uh, just a uh, lovely showing by Jansky. And I'm guessing is probably his longest outing of the season. Just waiting for some final warm up tosses. And then we'll have Amin, the second baseman, coming up. Martin reached first on a walk. And we're ready to go. Egan coming into today was 17 and 6. That was their school record for wins. They took that loss that first game, so 17 and 7. A couple other notes, like I said, Chapman going to Hamlin. Adam Stanton, the pitcher, who unfortunately has been injured most of the season, is going to Iowa Western. Lincoln Berry is going to be playing at Northern Iowa Area Community College. Amon steps in, second baseman. Fly out to center, a sack, bunt, and a ground out to first. Fastball in there for a strike by Mestemacher. Oh one, two down, nine three. 
The count is a score. Wolfpack being resilient here all week. Hot shot to Hatano, and he makes the final out. And just like that, the Wildcats, or the Wolfpack, come through the loser's bracket. They win one, two, three, four, five games in a matter of six days. And uh, clear out Egan's hopes and dreams for a state attorney appearance. So they get one run on that one hit, no errors, and one left on. So before signing off, I once again want to thank the crew. We had the cameraman, we had Greg Borman, we had Joe Chupik. The engineer was Dalton Gruber. The producer was Josh Sibley. We want to thank Egan TV for all their coverage throughout the season, especially the spring season. I'm Casey Lux, and that is it. It's a 9-3 win as the Wolfpack sweep the Wildcats. 5-0 the first game, 9-3 the second game with the big seven-run sixth inning. And that was highlighted by a three-run bases-clearing double by Sam Jansky, who pitched six and two-thirds and went three for four with four RBIs. Once again, thank you. You can always follow Egan TV, Facebook, Twitter.